the agenda uh, with the amendment that the minutes are being removed. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? The agenda is approved as presented with an amend with the amendment. All right, so we'll move on then to unfinished business. Mr. Costin? Uh, yes, ma'am. I'd like to give the authority an update on the rail spur. Um, it's, that project has already started. Phase one, which was the removal of the defective uh, crossing, has already been done. There is a temporary asphalt patch in place where the crossing, uh, the rail track used to be. Um, the contractor has advised uh, seven to ten weeks before the uh, replacement pieces will be in. Um, I have uh, provided to the authority in separate communications uh, diagrams, schematics, photographs of what's there, what we're going to get. Uh, I'd be happy to take any questions, but that's basically where we are on that project. We're, we're between phase one and phase two. Any questions for Mr. Costin? All right, do we have any new business? Uh, no, ma'am. Mr. Uh, uh, Hill has advised that there are no pending leases or anything, so there's no new business this evening. Okay. And it looks like we'll need a motion to enter closed session, and the recommended motion is on your agenda. You, you got it, Hill. You're going to make the motion. Oh, all right. Uh, Madam Chair, I move that the... Um, I'll make a motion that we go in closed session. I move that the Fort Pickett, uh, to, to discuss Fort Pickett Redev Redevelopment Authority of Nottoway County, Virginia, adjourn into a closed meeting pursuant to Code of Virginia 2.23711A3. Discussion or consideration of the acquisition of real property for a public purpose or of the disposition of publicly held real, real property where discussion is in open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiation negotiating strategy of the public body, specifically property located within Fort Pickett. I'll second that motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? This meeting will now enter closed session.
This meeting of the Nottoway County Local Redevelopment Authority will now reconvene in open session. Ms. Simmons, Ms. Simmons will you provide certification of closed session? Yes, ma'am. Whereas the Nottoway County Local Redevelopment Authority has convened as an executive meeting on this date, pursuant to the affirmative recorded vote and in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act, and whereas 2.2-3712 D of the Code of Virginia requires a certification by this local develop, redevelopment authority that such executive meeting was conducted in conformity with Virginia law. May I therefore be resolved that the Nottawa County Local Redevelopment Authority hereby certifies that to the best of each member's knowledge, only public business matters lawfully exempted from the open meeting requirements by Virginia law were discussed an executive meeting to which this certification resolution applies and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convening the executive meeting were here discussed or considered by the local redevelopment authority and three no action was taken from the executive meeting regarding the items discussed all right we have a motion for certification we have a second second we have a motion and a second. Mr. Constan, will you roll call the board? Uh, Mr. Rort, do you so certify? Yes. Mr. Bowen, do you so certify? Yes. Ms. Simmons, do you so certify? Yes. Mr. Vaughn, do you so certify? Yes. Madam Chairman Shackleton, do you so certify? Yes. 5 0, ma'am. All, all members uh, certify. All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? No. Aye. Uh, this meeting is adjourned. This is from Buddy. Good evening. This meeting of the Nottoway County Board of Supervisors will now come to order. I think we have uh, Reverend Chris Hillman with us tonight. Reverend Hillman, would you offer the invocation for us?
Hopefully not you praying. son was very excited that he was going to be christened into the mission field, and I told him, well, we don't know what you're going to be doing, buddy. I'm sorry we have this flood of the refugees coming in. He was asked because the fact that he is high school age, there's evidently going to be a lot of high school kids there from different states of doing this little test. Um, appreciate you all having me. Um, it's been a while. Um, I just think I would get here on time. I've been hanging out in the hospital and had to care most of the day. Uh, one of my deacons, uh, as of last night, uh, he had a stage four um, cancer. So we pray for him. Um, that was what I wanted to talk about, prayer, though. Um, my church, we've seen the miracles of what God can do, the miracle work. So this is a very devout man, and so he's at peace, and he's feeling as though the victory is already his, which we already know that it is, based on past Sunday, uh, the cross, death defeated, and then three days afterward, um, Jesus died for you to live, and his to yet live again eternally, so we all will we'll be here for a blissful time. So we're going to argue with each other, and we're going to be like him on occasion. But fear not, as Paul said in 1 Corinthians, this too shall pass. Because in a blink of an eye, although our work is very, very important, and we live on mission, although we might not be in a country serving as missionaries, we're to be on mission all the time, serving people, uh, whether it's Dinwiddie, whether it's Nottoway and Blackstone. So we are uh, heartful servants, and certainly we pray for you to have out um, all the time. And hopefully all of us as well. People are in need right now. Not just in Ukraine or Slovakia. All the mission is here right here in Nottoway. So let us pray. Most gracious God, that you would give us the hearts of servants. That when we see things that just ain't right, Father, with our brother, man, woman, and child, feel compulsion to help them out. We have a need to help them out because we know that they are your children. Oftentimes the least of these. So Father, we thank you that we are able to be on mission for you. And we thank you that the mission field is ripe and is full of people that you want us specifically to work with. To assist and help out as you would guide us to do so. So Father, our discussions tonight, may they be fruitful in your eyes. May our discussions be pleasing to you for the betterment of our community, of our communities, and our people who reside in these communities. May we have a good discussion, and may we learn from these discussions, and may we remember to love each other at all times, as we love you, as you love us. In your holy and righteous name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend. <clears throat> we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have any amendments to tonight's agenda? Yes, Madam, Madam Chairman, yes, I'm, I'm afraid we do, um, but they're, they're good amendments. Um, Madam Chairman, members of the board, everyone, good evening. Uh, the first uh, amendment would be to presentations, adding number two, Dr. Melba Moore, the Crossroads Executive Director, and item three, employee recognitions. And those would be all the uh, amendments to the agenda that staff would propose this evening. Madam okay. Chair, I have one under unfinished business mm -hmm. uh, behind the broadband. It would be a Cox Road update, please. Okay. 
What is it again, John? Coxworth. Oh, okay. All right. Any other recommendations related to the agenda for tonight? So we'll need a motion to approve the agenda as presented with the amendments to the presentations and unfinished business. So moved. Second. Oops. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, uh, uh. Any opposed? The agenda is approved as presented or with the noted amendments. We have in our package minutes from the February 17th and March 17th regular monthly meetings. Um, any recommendations for amendments to the minutes? Do we have a motion to approve the minutes as presented? Move that we receive and adopt. We have a motion to receive and adopt the minutes. Do we have a second? Second. second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes are received and adopted as presented. We'll move on to delegations from the public. Um, we welcome tonight's speakers to the podium. Each speaker is provided five minutes. And I am sorry we will not be able to facilitate the sharing of time between speakers. Um, There's a five minute allocation per individual. We'll start with Peggy Figler. Board of Supervisors, Madam Chair, Good Mr. Thompson Good and others. Thank you for letting me speak on behalf of the Nottoway County Historical Association. I just want you to know I am extremely passionate about the history of Nottoway County. I live for it. I am speaking about the uh, solar panel situation. As I'm sure you're all aware, I, uh, I wrote a letter published in the Courier Record Forum column yesterday, and Mr. Ingram has sent each of the board members a copy of that. I am very concerned that our association was not contacted when the solar ordinance was being drafted. The ordinance should be revisited to include historically significant sites and a cemetery clause, since solar panels cannot be installed over grave sites or cemeteries. The proposed site of 700 acres of the Cherry Tree Timber Tract is extremely troublesome to me. Historic, historically significant as it is, there are several cemeteries on that property, including at least three slave cemeteries, which generally have at least 25 graves per site. John Ellis owned that property in 1728 up to 1746. He received several patents. He owned 5,600 and change in acreage, along with his sons. They were grants given to him because he, William Byrd, and his father, and 27 other men are the ones that marked off the line between North Carolina and Virginia in 1728. And that was where he resided. He was a cousin of the Prince of Wales, and he had an elaborate funeral in Nottoway County, which at that time was Nottoway Parish and part of Amelia County in that vicinity, in that area where that site is. So it's, it's really troublesome to me that they're going to put solar panels on areas where they're not sure where people are buried and where there's any historical significance. There were two other plantations there later, which were Inwood and Roseland. Inwood was owned by the Knight family, and Roseland was owned by the Dickinson family. Both those families had at least a slave cemetery apiece, plus some landowner cemeteries. These are not marked. They would have to be found. Anyway. So proposing these large industrial solar sites in these beautiful areas of Nottoway, it's just killing me because this is a beautiful, beautiful county. 
I bring people here constantly and entertain them that call me that want to find their ancestors and they want to find where they came from and they want to find the houses and the areas and the grave sites. I take them around and every single person I, I bring here from Arkansas, Wyoming, Colorado, California, Maryland, Massachusetts, Florida, I mean lots of, lots of uh, states, they all come and say the same thing. They say what a beautiful untouched paradise this is and they'd love to retire here at some time. It really, it really hurts me that we're going to put these solar panels up all over the place. The landscape here really hasn't changed since the 1700s. It's still the same. And the problem is we should retain the historical and rural integrity of this county. It's admired by outsiders constantly and that's what brings people here. They are like an intrusion into our way of life and it shouldn't be about money, it should be about heart. The county will never be the same if this is all approved. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Jerry Spence. opportunity again to speak with you and I'll promise you I'll be much more brief this time <laughs> but I um, just want to quickly overview you know last time we discussed important habitats in the county um, natural resources in the area and how they're valuable to all citizens so today I wanted to do a little slight, slight different twist on that and for this meeting I'd like to try to impress upon you that these resources have a financial value to the residents of Nottoway County so and I'll use my farm example I'll think about this a lot today um, Come into this June, I will have had 20 individuals visit my farm, 175 acres, primarily for hunting, but also to advise me on some conservation work I plan to do. These 20 individuals have come from um, varying places in the state. So I'll give you an example. Four persons uh, come and hunt my property from Stafford County, Virginia. Um, one gentleman from Richmond. Uh, one gentleman from Dinwiddie two gentlemen from Prince George County, Virginia, um, two folks from Chesterfield. So they come to Virginia, they come to my farm particularly to hunt. I've given you the names of the deer hunters, the turkey hunters, and the rabbit hunters. <laughs> I was fortunate enough to be there for the last rabbit hunt. They actually killed 19 rabbits on my farm. I couldn't believe it. So. Um, there's a lot of use and enjoyment of that property and other properties in Ottawa County, and that has value. So I guess the question I have is those 20, 20 or 21 folks, it's actually 21, I can say the wrong number, folks, individually visit 48 times. We take them each individual person, how often they come to hunt, 48 times. That does include me and my personal visits as well. I come down about six or seven times a year to my farm. I don't hunt, but I enjoy, enjoy the property. So I guess the question is, is what is that value in Ottawa County? It's something that we really don't know it's hard to put a dollar amount on uh, when a person comes in from Stafford and they buy lunch at Mitchell's or the Farmer's Cafe or I come down eat breakfast at Hardee's and Crew or, or uh, Blackstone or eat at eat Farmer's Cafe, eat there quite a bit, sometimes Mitchell's. So it's kind of hard to put a value on that, but your businesses are benefiting from it. Um, there are quite a few visits and that can't be overlooked. So I wanted to bring that up as, as a also another side angle to the value of these habitats and the people it draws to the area. And then they in turn spend money at your local businesses. Okay, so keep that in mind as you're thinking about all this. And why did they come to my farm? It's because of the location of the farm and proximity to great habitat, large contiguous tracts. So these areas provide wildlife that make my property appealing for people to use and enjoy. So I guess the question is, is, is I can tell you that and can't give you a dollar amount, but has the county ever considered what that use and enjoyment is for folks and what value it has uh, for the county? I think hunting is very popular here. I think you guys all know that and we all know that in the room. It's, it's an important thing. And um, sometimes, you know, a proposed land use change, such as something large like a potential large industrial solar site, could potentially limit the use and enjoyment of those properties uh, for the folks that use it or myself as a landowner. 
So I guess the question I have has never been answered from anyone is, is how can you put a dollar value place, how can you place a dollar value on the loss of the use and enjoyment of a neighboring property? And who's responsible for that loss? Uh, most of the types of appraisals don't appraise that. Most of them do sales comparisons and other types of appraisals, but they don't appraise things like use and enjoyment. So just wanted to discuss that today, let you know there is value in these resources you have, a financial value. I want you to realize that there is a value to, for the county to inventorying those resources that you have. So I want to encourage you folks to really put the effort in. When I know you're started, have started a or a, a comprehensive plan update. I want to really encourage you to do a great job of that and involve the citizens. And uh, when that comprehensive plan update is complete, perhaps you know there's a place for solar in the county. And uh, I just want you guys to consider you know putting the the horse back in front of the cart, so to speak. Uh, that you do engage your citizens, that you do um, discuss with them their wants and desires for the county over the next five or ten years, and then if some solar usage is, is appropriate, I think it will come out in that process. So that's all I have to say. I appreciate your time, and thank you for letting me come speak again. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Richard H. Ingram, Jr. <laughs> Madam Chairperson, members of the board, I think I know all of you. I've known all of you for a long, long time. <laughs> uh, I won't get into how long, but uh, I'm here to speak about the solar panel issue, too, and not just in one particular site. I'm talking about all over the county, I think, like Ms. Figler was saying. Uh, one of the things I've heard is um, it'll create jobs. Well, tell me what jobs it's going to create. They're going to bring people in here that are going to build these things, and then they're going to leave. There might be two or three jobs left to cut the grass, but that's going to be it. There's not going to be any other jobs. Uh, so you're taking a big chunks of rural land and creating places that there are not going to be any jobs. Um, I know Ms. Figler in her article talked about Fort Pickett. Well, Fort Pickett was taken over by the U.S. government before World War II. I had a mom that worked there for 30 years. I had a dad that worked out there helping build it. And think of all the jobs that Fort Pickett has created for Nottoway County and surrounding areas. I mean, that's the kind of thing you want to look at. Um, look at Fast C. We know all the contractors came in and built Fast C, but guess what? They brought people with them from all over the United States that are now living in this area. And they have jobs out at Fast C. And a lot of people in Nottoway County have jobs at Fast C. So that's the kind of development I think you ought to be looking at. Things that are going to create jobs, that are going to be good jobs, good paying jobs, and they're going to be clean jobs. Um, I have talked to many people since this thing, Mr. Coburn had the headlines on December the 8th, I think, and I about fainted. Uh, 700 acres of 400,000 solar panels. And I couldn't believe it. And I said, so I have talked to a lot of people in the meantime. I've posted on Facebook. Some of y'all might have seen what I posted. But everybody that I have talked to is opposed to these things. They want to keep the rural nature of our county. And as Ms. Figler said, we have a beautiful county. And I would like to keep it that way. Uh, you know, it, it, if you want to put solar, and I, got no, I have no problem with solar if you want to put it on the roof of your house, why don't you put it on the, the roofs of the schools? Why don't you put it on the government buildings? There's plenty of, of buildings in Nottoway County that solar can be put on, not on ground where the water will wash everything away. Um, then I started digging, as I always do. Uh, I dug into the Richmond Times Dispatch on Thursday, April the 7th, and it said Dominion closes part of solar plant after two fires. They have not said what the cause of those fires were. It says, uh, Company personnel reported one on March the 3rd and on March the 29th. The company said neither fire caused any injury or impacted any area outside the facility, but what did it get caused to those solar panels and where are those ones that were damaged? They can't go in the landfill. Uh, the cause of the fires is un unknown, but we suspect they are related. As a precaution, we have shut down that entire area of the facility. Well, now, you were talking about sharing revenue. If they shut it down, where are you going to get your revenue from? Okay, I think you've probably all seen the DEQ memorandum of March the 29th when 
The DEQ said, we miscalculated. <laughs> we we uh, didn't count solar panels as being impervious, so now they are. And, you know, all you got to do is look at the, the problems that have been in other areas. I got a comment on my Facebook post this morning from somebody who said, you need to go over to Chase City and look what that's done. I mean, it's, it's running in the road, it's running into, into Bugs Island. And you don't want that here. I certainly don't want that here. Uh, Governor Youngkin has proposed different things. And one of the things he said is, we've got to set stricter runoff rules for solar farms. The bad thing is that the solar companies and, I guess, Dominion got into it and said, oh, well, we got, we got to wait, we got to wait, we got projects in the, in the, in the. so they're talking about it'll go into effect December of 2024. So I asked this board, on behalf of the people of Nottaway County, if you have to uh, abolish the, the uh, ordinance you have now, abolish it. Wait until the state gets their regulations together after December of 2024, then address the issue. Don't go jumping into something that you're not sure of. I'm like Ms. Figler. I love the history of this county. Um, and <laughs> it's historic. And as I told you at the last meeting when I spoke, y'all have the heart and soul of this county in your hands. And I know y'all will do the right thing because you own this board because you want to do the right thing for the people in Ottawa County. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Daniels. Thank you, Ms. Daniels. John Shute. I'm going to change the topic a little bit. Good evening, Madam Chair, Mr. Costin, Supervisors, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. For those that don't know me in the audience, I am the... Uh, Fire Chief of Burkeville Volunteer Fire Department and a long-standing supporter of volunteer services. I would like to speak to the needs of our volunteers, volunteer fire services serving the county. At last week's work session, which I watched, the, uh, the discussion involving the volunteers and volunteer fire services in particular seemed to diminish the needs of, the, of our volunteers. Volunteer firefighters in this county save the town and county taxpayers $250,000 a month in labor costs for volunteer versus paid services, equating to $3 million a year. In 2022, Nottaway County deemed it necessary to allocate $200,000 to Blackstone to mostly enhance the needs of the communities in that area with some benefit to other areas of the county, which I do support. Now another department has requested funding to address an equipment need for the central part of the county that will equally benefit fire protection in all of the county and is wholly supported by this fire chief and my members. I would like to point out that the county's volunteers have only one job, which is to prepare for, train for, and respond to the county's emergencies. They should not be begging for volunteers, staffing, or working to raise funds to support their operations. The responsibility rests jointly with the three towns and the county administration the emergency services coordinator should work with all parties concerned to ensure that the volunteer departments are never burdened with this responsibility. On the matters of volunteer compensations, benefits, and expense reimbursements, which was also discussed, the FLSA compliance manual provides guidance on those matters as well. It is possible to compensate volunteers with both uh, compensation benefits and other health care benefits, insurance policies, and so forth, as well as tax relief. That is clearly outlined in that manual, and it's known as a bright line test. It is my hope that you will give adequate consideration to these matters in your continuing budget sessions. While I completely understand 
the need to balance a county budget. It does make sense, but do not put it on the backs of volunteers who give freely of their time to both their towns and counties. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schreiber. Sonny Abbott. Madam Chair, members of the board. First of all, I personally want to thank Jack Boswell for inviting me to last month's CARES meeting. I learned a great deal. I thought CARES primarily was a fundraising organization and learned they are so much more. Also, during the school board meeting last week, there was a discussion regarding the former Blackstone School. Blackstone wants to demolish the single-story building and slightly modify the current agreement that exists with the school system. The board may recall that the school system declared this property obsolete. So just a few questions. Who actually holds title to the land where the old unused school is located? Now, there seems to be some discussion between obsolete and surplus. If declared surplus, will the land revert to the county? Or when the building is demolished, will what remains still be considered obsolete? If the school, if the school system holds title, can they sell the property? Currently, the Commissioner of the Revenue shows the building belongs to the school system with a land value of just over $100,000. Now, I know answers are difficult to come by, although I will appreciate learning the Board's position on these questions and trust that the Chair will ensure that responses are forthcoming. Secondly, or last, there is a scheduled joint work session between the school board and this board on April 28th. I respectfully request and ask this board to consider allowing questions from attendees since the school system has already adopted their budget and the current meetings that are scheduled conflict and it's nearly impossible to attend both sessions since they run on the same day at the same times. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Mr. Abbott. Thank you, Mr. Abbott. <coughs> Mr. Costin, may I turn over to you to see that Mr. Abbott gets answers to the questions that he asked tonight? Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Tyler Scott. Good evening. Good evening. Madam Chair, fellow board members, I would like to talk about the solar farms. I did speak last month. I'm one of those retirees who has moved here for this beautiful county, our beautiful way of life, the people, the small towns. I've lived here five years and this is my home now. My daughter is visiting from the Los Angeles. She's an actress, and she hopes to make Southside her home one day. But if she comes here, it will be because of our way of life and our beauty. Marlon and I spent two hours today in the car with a friend in Lunenburg, driving through the farmland, seeing where people hunt, the ponds. And I thought, what is this going to be like when it's covered with solar farms? It will have a terrible impact on our land. And I think many of us know that. Who owns these companies? Are they Chinese subsidiaries? Are they high political donors? When it comes to renewable companies, you must follow the money. Uh, Mr. Ingram already read the article about the fires. I have an article from the Wall Street Journal from mid-April that says Southeast Asia's role as top U.S. solar supplier is probed. Evidently, they're dodging tariffs, and one paragraph says, 
Washington wants to know how much China-made material is used in solar panels shipped from Malaysia, Vietnam, Thailand, and Cambodia, countries that accounted for 85% of American imports last year. It is investigating whether producers do small-time processing in these countries to skirt tariffs while reaching back into China-based supply chains for critical components. My question is to everyone, what is in these panels? Because I think we're all being extremely naive to think that it will not impact our soil, our rivers, et cetera. Not to mention, have you driven by a solar farm lately? No offense, but they're hideous. They scar our landscape. Our value is in our land as it is. And I'm pleading with you to consider this. If we are to develop here in Nottaway, shouldn't it be because companies have moved here and are going to bring their employees and offer our residents jobs? That will not happen with solar farms. On a final note, and this is said with all due respect to Ms. Shackleton, because I admire you a lot, but your brother did speak last month about maybe wanting a solar farm and being in the business. And so I hope you would, to be honest, consider recusing yourself from votes because if you have family in the business, it's hard for all of us to be objective. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Arlene Robertson. Good evening. Good, evening. Good evening. It's been a while since I've stood before the board. I do come this evening not asking for anything, but just to thank the board for what they have done in the last two years since I've served as your representative on the Piedmont Senior Resources Board. I thank you all for allowing me the opportunity to serve. And I also just want to thank you for the help that you've given to Piedmont Senior Resources. There have been a lot of things that we've done in the um, area of Piedmont. People throughout COVID, they continue to get all things that they needed. Um, we worked hard to make sure that during the ice storm, whatever people needed, some of them had to have generators. Piedmont was able to support those items for them. So we thank Nottaway for what they've done <clears throat> for um, the citizens of this county as far as the Piedmont Senior Resources is concerned. And we have an upcoming fundraising event. Um, I know that you all probably know about it, so I do want to ask each of you to help to support us in this event. And um, I will give you tickets. Um, they're $5 each. I will go on and catch everybody except Mr. Roy. <laughs> I won't ask him to buy one from me because he has 10 of his own. No, 20, I believe. <laughs> we have 20 of, of his own. Job, huh? But I do appreciate what you all do each year as we do come to you from Piedmont Senior Resources asking for those things that we know senior citizens are in need of. We do have an upcoming this month um, COVID testings uh, that will be held at the site of Piedmont Senior Resources. I know that you get all of this in your book, but in your packet from Piedmont, but you put me on the board, so I feel I need to let you know, as well as the citizens know, Piedmont Senior Resources is doing well. Everybody um, who's working well on the board we have good meetings. Um, our meetings do not last long, and I just invite any of you who want to come to our meetings to come sometimes and just sit and um, see what else, all, all other things are going on through Piedmont Senior Resources. Most of our people in Nottaway, when they do get services, they will either give me a call thanking me for my service on Piedmont, or either they will send a note saying thank you for um, your help on the Piedmont Senior Resources Board. I do thank you again for um, allowing me to serve you. I think I have, what, another year or two years um, to serve, and um, I've enjoyed this as much as um, I, you all enjoy serving us. 
and, and I know y'all are taking that with a grain of salt. So you all have a blessed evening. <laughs> you all have a blessed evening and just continue the work that you're doing in Nottaway County. I truly appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Ms. Ross. <laughs> Chris Page. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you. Uh, let me speak. Uh, I don't always agree with Miss Scott, but um, anybody's order from wish.com can probably figure out why those fires started on the solar panels. You know, that comes directly from China. But um, I think you guys are in a pickle here because of the Dillon rule. You know, um, I, you know, the fact of the matter is solar has been approved by the state. And, you know, the, unfortunately, your hands are kind of tied. We're kind of stuck with it. But we do have an ordinance. And I, I I think we, with with or without it, I think people can still apply uh, for solar. Um, we probably get sued just getting rid of the ordinance, saying we can't take applications because the state says they can they can do it. And um, what I recommend is we're not ready for solar. There's new le le um, legislation still coming down. Um, there's obviously things where the community doesn't want it. I think what you should do instead is add to your ordinance. Um, that solar is uh, allowed on 200 square foot per five acre lots for five, you know, two, only 200 square feet of every five acres until you guys can come back and look at the ordinance later, get all the reg regulations and legislation in. This would meet you, the, the, this would meet the requirement of it being legal in the state and them actually able to operate, that you're offering solar uh, and probably stop you from being sued because you can limit the amount of in industry that comes in that's, that can be done. So that's my recommendation there. I'm not an attorney, but I think that may be a good way to go um, until we can get it together. The other thing is if solar isn't clean enough to be one mile from town, why well, is it clean enough to be one mile or closer to our rivers? What's the long lasting effect on well water? Maybe it doesn't have an immediate effect, but does the runoff have an overall effect on well water? We have a lot of people in the county on well water that have wells. So. Uh, there's a lot of things that we need to look at. I'm not against solar, but I think it, we need to do it right. Um, now, to a more pressing issue, um, firefighters. Um, you know, we need them in this community. Everybody who volunteers, they're great, hardworking people. They're there to help the community. I mean, I had two heart attacks last year. I had to have emergency services come through. I appreciate them. I think the town of Blackstone sometimes does some things to, you know, show appreciation of their volunteers. And, you know, maybe there's a way we can get around it. Maybe we could fund those towns, the extra money, and then they to use for whatever they like. And if they want to give them out as bonuses, then, then they can do that. But we do need to so, show some appreciation. Uh, the county does save a lot of money. We have emergency services coordinator, but we don't have emergency services in the county. You know, we only have the sheriff's office. And... Um, you know, these people, you know, save us a lot of tax money and they really do care about their neighbors. Um, the other thing with solar that I wanted to reach on um, is I want to want to know, is Ronnie Rourke a lobbyist for Sonesco? I, I, honestly, uh, and I, I looked online that on the list of lobbyists and I can't find him on there, but I know that he introduced Sonesco to some board of supervisors. They had some meetings. And, you know, what is he getting out of it? Have Sonesco, you know, I, I can't say they're alleged in Charlotte County to have misrepresented a lot of things. Profit sharing, environmental impacts, jobs. And have we, anybody reached up to our neighbors to the south and said, hey, what are the problems y'all are facing so we can put that in our ordinance? I think that's something we should probably reach out, get all the facts. And we need to figure out who's kind of behind this and whether they're legally lobby lobbying for people. Um, other than that, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this concludes the delegations from the public. We don't, we're not making exceptions, I'm sorry. All right, so we're going to move on to public hearings. Uh, next item on the agenda is a public hearing for floodplain overlay district. Mr. Zodi, will you provide an introduction to this for us? Yes, I will. Thank you very much. Um, this is uh, what we're doing is amending 
and to some to some extent we're replacing uh, the existing floodplain district overlay for Nottoway County. This is coming to us uh, from the Department of Conservation and Recreation and FEMA. Uh, the last time we updated our FIRM maps, and FIRM stands for the Flood Insurance Rate Maps, and our ordinance was uh, June 2nd of 2009. And about a month after, I, less than a month, two weeks after I came, I got a, con a call from DCR, and they said we had to have the revised ordinance language and the revised maps that they've already provided um, approved by uh, the effective date of the firm maps, which is May 3rd of this year. So with that, I, I do want to note a few things with this um, insurance rate map is that this and the ordinance as well, uh, bear with me for one sec. Um, there's significant differences with the revised ordinance. Um, several of the things include um, expansion, well, creation of the floodplain administrator's role. You'd think that would be kind of common, but it wasn't. Uh, we're going from a nine-page existing ordinance to a 25-page existing ordinance. Other factors include, other changes include uh, submitting model back technical data, district boundary changes, um, use and interpretation of the map, firm maps, and the glossary, the addition of the glossary, uh, dare say it's a robust glossary. We didn't have one before. That one's about six or seven pages. So that's really the bulk of the changes. Um, we had the option from DCR uh, to, we, I used their model ordinance. It's on the website, state's website, uh, along with FEMA. And we had several options to make more stringent requirements. And if you all know me, well, now you'll know that I'm not big on regulations, certain regulations. So I like to keep them simple. So one of the things I did was insert allowing accessory structures up to 600 square feet. As it stands now, if we were to just to take all the recommendations DCR provided us, we would have a minimum or well, maximum of 300, foot, 300 square foot accessory structures. And if anyone wanted to enlarge one in the SFHA, which is Special Flood Hazard Area, they'd have to go before um, the Board of Zone Appeals. I wanted to remove that obstacle for folks. If they already have one or they want to expand one, there's a process for it, and that they would come to me for that. I'm trying to think what else. There's really, it's a lot of technical related um, data. Well, yeah, and I'm, I really don't have much more to say in terms of that. The speed is the, uh, is the essence to get, it's, we have to have this passed by May 3rd. I haven't deviated from the model ordinance that was provided by the state. I followed what they said, and I submitted to them. Um, on Mar February 25th, and I received comments back on March 24th. Okay. Board members, any questions or clarification from Mr. Zodi on this? Okay. So we'll need a motion to open the public hearing for floodplain overlay district. So moved. We have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to open the public hearing. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. We now open the public hearing for floodplain overlay district. Is there anyone here this evening who wishes to speak in support of the revised flood insurance rate map and zoning amendment as presented by Mr. Zodi? We don't have anyone signed up to speak. So is there anyone here this evening who wishes to speak in opposition to the matter? We'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. We have a motion. We have a second. Second. Okay, motion and a second. All in favor? So vote aye. 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 Any opposed? The public hearing is now closed. We'll need a motion to adopt the revised zoning ordinance and the revised flood insurance rate map as presented by Mr. Zodi. M Madam Chair, the uh, Planning Commission heard this. There was no... You know, they, 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 he did a very, very well, good, very good job with this, and um, we're very fortunate. We don't have a lot of flood areas in Nottoway County <laughs> compared to a lot of the counties. So I make a motion. We approve. All right. I second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Uh, Any opposed? The motion passes. The board approves the adoption of the revised floodplain insurance rate map and adoption of the revised 
revised floodplain overlay district zoning ordinance. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you, Mr. Zoe. Good job. All right, we'll move on to presentations. I believe um, do we have Ms. Wanda Dyson here to share information about the Juneteenth celebration. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Madam Chair and members of the board, my name is Wanda Dyson, and tonight I wear two hats. I'm representing the Blackstone Juneteenth Celebration, as well as Life Changing Community Development Corporation. First of all, I'll read a little bit about the Juneteenth. We are a nonprofit organization that serves to enlighten, educate, and illustrate the significance of Juneteenth and black history within our community. Our mission is to promote community education on the history of African Americans and foster community involvement for all citizens. Thank you for your participation in the Juneteenth celebration on last year. And if you did not participate on last year, we look forward to seeing you on this year. The celebration is on June the 25th, Saturday from 10 o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock in the evening. We had a ball, didn't we, last time, Billy? <laughs> Um, it's a celebration of family, even a food, fun, entertainment, and education about Juneteenth. The committee's intent is to involve all cities in the county, Nottaway, Crewe, and Burkeville. I have a letter to Mr. Costin from the committee. The Town of Blackstone Juneteenth Committee humbly requests funding and volunteers on behalf of the Nottaway County Juneteenth Celebration. The Town of Blackstone Juneteenth Committee aims to collect funds in order to support the Town of Blackstone Juneteenth Celebration in Nottaway County. The Nottaway County funding would assist the entertainment, logistics, transportation, public works, decorations, advertisement, and other event expenses. As a nonprofit organization, all additional monies would help fund future events that may be hosted by this organization. I didn't read all of it, but I will leave this for Mr. Costin. We are looking for volunteers, so our next meeting is scheduled for next Tuesday, April the 26th at 7 o'clock p.m. That meeting will be held at the Life Changing Community Development Corporation, 410 South Hare Street, Blackstone, Virginia. Now I'll talk a little bit about Life Changing Community Development Corporation. I see Doc. Dr. Hawks is here as well. He's on the, um, on the board with me as well for that organization. Um, that organization is also a nonprofit organization that helps with mentoring our children. Uh, we have a, a camp that's coming up, a youth summer camp that's coming up. Uh, the dates for that, and I'll have this ready for you as well. Uh, Mr. Dr. Costin, for July 25th, July 29th, August the 1st through the 5th. The registration for children is $100 per child. The last day of, to register is July the 11th. And it has the contact information on here as well. And I will leave this with our, our board meeting tonight. In a world of chaos and confusion, the idle mind can sometimes be the devil's workshop. So I challenge my community to stay physically, mentally, and spiritually positive. And let's be positive role models to the children of Nottoway County. Let's start with love, peace, and respect. And let's start that tonight. And I look forward to seeing everyone here at the Blackstone Juneteenth celebration. Thank you so very much for allowing me to speak tonight. Thank you, Ms. Thank Dyson. You. Well, well Ma Madam Chairman, if I may just take a personal moment. Ms. Dyson, I think you had a slip of the tongue. You referred to me as Dr. Costin. My, you made my mother so proud. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, believe me, he's no doctor. <laughs> <laughs> a butcher. <laughs> Uh, we have Dr. Melba Moore, Executive Director of Crossroads Community Services. Dr. Moore, welcome. Good evening, uh, Madam Chair 
and Board of Supervisors and members and residents in the audience. Let me first say thank you for being patient uh, for my arrival. The second thing I will share is that I've been on the job for two weeks, a week, yeah, a week Monday, going mm -hmm. on two weeks, seems a little bit longer. But what I will share with you is my organization needs to heal. They have been, as probably many of you in this audience and whoever read the paper, you've probably been traumatized by the things that occurred. Imagine for a moment that you work somewhere and you're not asked your opinion. You're a subject matter expert. You know the workings, inner workings of what you do, but you're not asked. You're given direction constantly. We are on this plane right now, and I said earlier when, uh, last week when I was in Lunenburg, we're on a bus and we're going somewhere. We're not going to put anybody off the bus. People will select, self-select, to be taken off the bus. It's going to take time. We're going to need to be patient. We're going to need to be kind and respectful. A couple of things that are high level uh, that we will need to do. Automate financial systems, HR systems, our IT system. This week we had a presentation regarding the health benefits and there will be a little bit of a savings and that's a blessing. But given our insurance health care costs went up. We had a meeting this week with the Piedmont Regional Authority Jail. We're going to enter into a partnership with them on some programming. That's a good thing and that's through a grant that we have. Before coming here I had a meeting about the budget and we're looking at how we can be creative. In my meeting earlier today I listened and, and my first 30 days is really radical listening. Just listen and learn. In the 60 days you start to contribute to the organization. The 90 days you start to wrap up that report that I have to submit to my board at that 100th day as to what I assess. I'm pretty sure what I will report back to my board will be some of what I'm sharing this evening. That healing process must take place. And likewise, I'm willing to bet that my board needs to heal. They had to make some tough decisions, and they will need time. We're going to go through a SWOT analysis. We're going to go through strategic planning. I uh, put a four questions out uh, today to my staff, to my team, and I want everybody to be honest, to communicate how are we doing, what did we do well, where do they want to be, what is it they want to do, and how I can help them get there. So I represent the organization, I represent the community as well. So what can I do so that they will be better? That's my job. Lastly, I want to say that it's about being positive, and I think somebody said that here this evening. We have to be positive. I apologize to this board, and I apologize to this community for the disarray and the chaos that took place, but trust me, we're going somewhere. If I was in St. Louis, where I'm from, if I was in Cincinnati, I would talk to you about playing baseball. <laughs> We're going to knock some balls out the park, <laughs> and you're going to be proud of us. And we're going to put Crossroads on the map to be the organization where people are dying to get in for services and to work. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the funding opportunities that you bring to my organization. And thank you for what you do. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Mr. Costin, do you have some employee recognition? Ma Madam Chair, before oh. you get started, I, and I thank uh, Ms. Moore, Dr. Moore for being here tonight, and 
and I, I think you represent Ms. Simmons on that um, the board. I do. Um, I, you know, I got this saying, you know, you got to stand up and get the dust off of you and get back in the ball game. And I, and I like the way you, um, and we, because we put a lot of money in, 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 in faith in Crossroads, and they, and, the, and we need to continue doing that. But Ms. Simmons, we need to hold board members accountable too, because some, right. some nepotism was going on there, and and um, that I've been told, and I, I have no approved in, in digging. I, I, I brought my concerns yes. to Ms. Simmons. And so um, not only should we hold the director accountable, our board members, so I just want to uh, right. put that in public record. So That's right. Okay. And we still have some of that going on. Okay. So that well, thank you. That needs to be corrected. Keep your eye on that, Ms. Simmons. And I appreciate it. we want to thank Dr. Moore for coming to try to bail us out because we've had a rough time, but we have faith in you. It'll work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> thank you. Madam, uh, Madam Chairman, this time in the uh, agenda, the presentations of employee recognitions. Uh, we have uh, two uh, recognitions for persons who've completed one year. That's uh, Terry L. Brown, Landfill Convenience Site Attendant, and Rebecca S. Calderon, did, I'm going to mess this up, Duranani, and Rebecca's here this evening. <laughs> <laughs> so if you would. Um, the first year acknowledgement is simply the presentation of a lapel pin. So please come forward. A certificate for five years for Mary Hope Hodgson, Hodgson the uh, Children's Services Act Coordinator. I don't believe she's here this evening. A uh, 10 year certificate for Ralph H. Branch Sr., he's a laborer at the landfill. Wow. And a 15 year frame certificate for Kermit Hawks, landfill scale house operator. So it looks like uh, one out of six this evening. All right, well, that's good. <laughs> Okay, so we'll move on to department reports. Um, I believe Ms. Bryant, Diana Bryant, Assistant Residency Administrator with Virginia Department of Transportation is here to report on VDOT's secondary six-year plan. Good evening, Mr. Good Chairman, you. members of the board, Mr. Costin. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, let me first apologize for um, not getting the report to you in time to make it into your packets. However, I did lay it there on your, on your desk. Um, so I wanted to review a little bit of that um, since it was so late. Um, we are repairing some drainage of problems that we have out on Route 631. I think all of that is complete and hopefully um, it takes care of the problem. We started doing some drop-in and cleaning in the um, curb and gutters. Um, we started doing a lot of sweeping in the curb and gutters, but we had some um, um, equipment issues. So as soon as that's resolved, um, that will resume. There's been a lot of surface treatment, um, cape seal, a lot of surfacing going on within the counties. And um, I know, uh, I know that's been an issue for some people with the um, with the loose gravel, but um, I myself have 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 had that issue. But um, please bear with us while we we get another coating of surface treatment on these roads and um, makes them last longer and and gets rid of the uh, the cracking and everything. Um, the detour that we put in place out here for the ramp um, 
initially it was supposed to only be in, in place for a short period of time, but it seems that we're having a lot of issues with the bearing assemblies um, on these pier caps, and um, we're having some design problems. So um, they're continuing to work on the things that they can work on, but um, that detour may be in place um, longer than, well, it's already been in place longer than we first thought it would be, but it's still going to be in place for a while. Um, the bridge on Route 46 at the county line, that's um, actually the construction is supposed to um, start out there in mid mid year this year and um, there's going to be a, a detour in place so I will provide a copy of that detour again I know it's been a long time since um, I brought that to the board um, so I just want to keep that um, front and center for everybody because the route 46 will be detoured between um, Nottoway and Brunswick County so that they can rehab the bridge over the dam there um, that's all of the additional items that I had for um, the monthly report. Um, did you want to review the, the items that we went over at the work session? Okay. okay, so during the work session last week, I did bring the um, proposed numbers for the six-year plan. And uh, before you, you have a copy of the draft for the items that VDOT recommended and um, we needed to get concurrence from the board to proceed with this. So I'll just go over the projects that are listed here. Um, the projects that have been in the plan and will remain in the plan are the guardrail installation on Route 723. Um, we have several more locations of that, that that will be done through this project. Route 670 High Point Road and Route 647 Jennings Ordinary Road, Route 684 Crystal Lake Road, the study at the intersection of Williamson Road. Um, I thought maybe I'd be able to take that out, but it doesn't look like it's going to be complete in time to take it out before we have the public hearing, so that will probably remain in there this year again. But they are currently working on that, and they're, they're almost finished, but they still have some work to do. Um, the next project would be Route 655 Williamson Road. All of these projects are, are real rustic. Route 686 Barnes Lane. And then the two projects that VDOT recommended be added to the plan was Route 686 Hawthorne Drive. And that estimate for that project is approximately 67000 And we recommended adding Piper Lane, Route 685. And that project is uh, 68000 So if the board agrees um, with the proposed draft for the work session, um, next month we'll have the public hearing for the six-year plan. And if everybody agrees, then, then we'll ask for a resolution to adopt that for another year. Madam Chair, I'm going to get the VDOT. No, oh, I'm sorry. I was getting ready to make a motion to move. Mm. You okay? Mm, did you? <coughs> Madam Chair, I move that at next month's meeting we'll have a public hearing on VDOT, six-year plan. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second for the public hearing on the VDOT six-year plan. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Uh. Any opposed? All right, the motion passes and the public hearing will be at next month's regular board meeting. Thank you, Ms. Bryant. Dr. Grimes here this evening? Oh, Dr. Grimes, would you like to speak to us? A report on the school board? Madam Chair, members of the board, I'll be brief. Thank you for the opportunity to 
share with you um, some of the things that have been going on with the school system. Um, I wanted to let you know that um, we are busily preparing for the end of the current school year while we're also preparing for the start of the next school year. So we are in that time of the year where we have all of the excitement related to leading up to graduation. Prom was last weekend. But we're also excited about the opportunities to start afresh and start again. That's one of the unique things about being in a school system is you have your year, but you know that you always get a fresh start come the start of the school year, which for us is in August. Um, in preparation for the next year, and also right now, it's never too late to fill vacant positions. We did host a job fair tonight in the gym of Blackstone Elementary School. We look forward to having more of those. We also look forward to working with Mr. Rose um, of Davenport for the financial review. I and the director of finance, Heather Meyer, did have a meeting with him um, last week and look forward to continuing the process of gathering information and, and finding out what suggestions he can offer. Um, I also want to thank the town of Blackstone and the county of Nottoway for its support and partnership to the school system. On um, last week leading up to the prom, um, we did have a simulation um, out on the field behind the intermediate school where um, our um, uh, junior fire chief, Dar Daryl Sellers, who is a student at Nottoway High School, organized and led a simulation for students to see and understand um, the impact of what happens when there is an accident that results from drunk driving. Um, and we had members from fire, we had volunteers, we had emergency services, we had rescue, we had med flight uh, come in and land the helicopter and take the patient away. We had a demonstration where the drunk driver went through the sobriety field test and was arrested so students could see what happens in those situations. <laughs> um, they saw uh, the emergency folks remove the door from a vehicle that could not be opened in a normal way. I thought it was very impactful. Uh, there are tons of photographs that were taken um, by in-depth production, productions that just shows, again, what students saw and what they experienced during that. And I especially want to shout out our students who um, are junior firefighters, but who were instrumental in helping um, put, pull, pull it together. They organized, they set things up on the field and made sure that it went off well. Um, and those, as well as participate, two were participants in the simulation. And those are Daryl Sellers, whom I've already referenced, Nick Bradford, Adrian Dalton, Hannah Doyle, Anthony Mitchell, James Smith, and Sam Young. I often say, and I encourage our students to let us know things that they think are beneficial. Um, if we listen to our young people, they certainly know what's going on and what concerns them. And if we can just listen to them and, and allow them to shine, and show us what they can do to help get their messages out. I think that that's a great thing, and that's what this simulation was a great example of. In fact, when we were out there, Mr. Seller said to me, I'm planning to do this next year, too. And I was like, all right, young man, that sounds like a plan. And the last thing that I'd like to share is we do have graduation scheduled for May 28th, which is the Saturday before Memorial Day. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank Brown. you, Dr. Brown. Thank you. <laughs> Madam Chair, yeah. I do have something for social services. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, social services um, regular meeting was held this past Tuesday <clears throat> in the Virginia Department of Social Services, the State Board of Social Services. They drafted a resolution for Child Abuse Prevention Month. Um, it's a resolution of recognition of what it is. I won't read the whole thing to you, but just to sum it up, is to recognize April as Child Abuse Prevention Month by promoting and highlighting programs and actions in their own community that support families and safeguard and nurture our children, utilizing a variety of activities to include the Virginia Child Abuse Prevention Toolkit developed by Families for Virginia. Also, I um, want to give a big thank you to um, the Alzheimer's Association Southeastern Virginia Chapter, Piedmont Senior Resources, and uh, the Virginia Department of Social Services, and the Crew Volunteer Fire Department. They're going to, Crew Volunteer Fire Department is allowing the department to be utilized to host a community forum in Nottawa County here on Wednesday, May the 11th at 10 a.m. And it's to learn about Alzheimer's, dementia, and memory loss in this brief community-focused listening session. And they'll review the basics of these conditions, services of the Alzheimer's Association, and how we can expand 
the reach of local programs and services, being a friend and share your thoughts about how Alzheimer's Association can help more people in your community. Again, that's going to be at the Crew Fire Department, Wednesday, May 11th at 10 a.m. Also, if you're looking for a career, um, there is a couple of openings over at Social Services, and you can call the office there or go online. There's a vacancy at uh, the uh, Family Services and also a couple with the um, um, benefits program. It's a wonderful team in place there. We have a great new director and the top of the line supervisors that are there to um, train you. Also, last item here is the administrative service manager, Alicia Cisco, had a wonderful suggestion about DSS training because of, of potentially encountering these issues when they visit homes, which would be um, uh, substance abuse, heroin, um, and issues like that. It's a, it, what we're looking to do, they were going to host something there, but during that meeting I asked them about the potential to host something for the entire complex, anybody who wants to be involved in that. And what happens is you receive a free dose, not injected, but you know, they'll give you a free dose of Narcan and a revived pouch with overdose emergency supplies, and you'll learn how to respond to an opioid overdose emergency and how overdoses happen and the risk factors for opioid overdoses. And um, also currently, if anyone's currently using opioids or heroin or prescription pain medication and uh, their family is aware of it, the families should come to this as well. So we're looking for a place to potentially host. And I thought it was a wonderful idea she had, and it's by Rapid Revive. And some of you may have seen that they had that set up at Crew um, Station um, last week. They had a tent up there. It's very easy to train, and it's very easy to administer, and it could save on someone's life. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Boyle. Mr. Zodi, did you wish to speak to your report tonight or anything to add to it? Or? Um, no, well, the one thing I would add is just about the, the, uh, the Planning Commission. We do have a, um, a scheduled um, public hearing next month. It's an outdoor event, and it's a result of a violation uh, from for ENS, um, probably stormwater and zoning as well. But my, my philosophy is, you know, we when we catch somebody uh, after a report is filed, I like to um, work with them and bring them you know, into compliance as opposed to punishing them. And the gentleman is willing to do that. Um, and so I just want to let you all know it'll be a special exception for uh, outdoor events. It'll be a motocross track. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other department representatives present this evening that wish to speak to the reports that are in our package? Any questions or comments from supervisors about the department's reports? No. No, ma'am. Ma'am. Okay. We'll move on. Or do we have any constitutional officers here who wish to speak? Okay. We'll move on to unfinished business. And we'll start with the animal shelter. On March 30th, Mr. Bowen, Mr. Costin, Mr. Anzavino, and I met with the CARES Committee and Chris Phillips, the project manager with the architectural firm RRMM, to review the design process for the new shelter. Mr. Phillips reported that while the design process is well underway, there are a number of considerations for the board to keep in mind. These included that supply chain issues are impacting the availability of commercial construction components. While future delays and shortages can't be predicted, Jobs are being delayed and materials are on back order. Inflation is, in fact, is affecting all aspects of the project construction budget. Low interest rates and availability of funding has created a high demand for construction contractors, thus limiting the availability of labor. And also at this meeting, the town of Burkeville requested engineering assistance in estimating the cost of new service lines to the shelter. Moving forward, the original design schedule assumed four months to complete the construction documents with a bid date of July 1. So because RRMM will now need to work with DEQ on stormwater design for the site, a month will be added to the process. The new water lines to be run by Burke will be a modification to a public waterworks. Therefore, this part of the project will involve an extensive process that will require proposals from engineers as well as state review and approval. Obtaining a Virginia Department of Health Waterworks construction permit 
could be a six to seven month process which will push back the construction bid date. Mr. Phillips and RRMM are moving forward with the building design as discussed with a goal to complete it by August 1. The Nottaway Cares Committee reports current donations totaling nearly $219,000. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Yeah. The committee has discussed placing a temporary future home of sign at the shelter once we have the architect's final design that includes a visual of the exterior. Uh, CARES volunteers continue to pursue funding oppor opportunities through donations and grants. And Mr. Zodi, I believe you're looking into a potential pet code grant for municipalities. Uh, thank you for your assistance, and I hope you'll keep the shelter project in mind if I come across other grant opportunities. <laughs> and Mr. Costin, as I understand, John Anzavino is beginning to transition away from this project, and you will take on a more direct role in the project management. Yes, ma'am. So we'll continue to monitor all of the previously noted cost and supply issues, as well as the related processes in relation to how they're impacting the budget and the timeline, and we'll keep the board and the community well informed as we go forward. Mr. Bowen, do you have a comprehensive plan update for us? Madam Chair, the committee didn't meet due to our C CRC representatives. He, he, uh, he had a scheduling conflict, so um, we plan to meet next month prior to the Planning Commission meeting. Okay. Madam Chair, um, Steve, do they, have they given you any type of a um, potential completion date for that comprehensive plan? What was it? Were you, um, I'm trying to. We got a communication. We get, uh, we probe this, Mr. Rourke, because it's one of your your questions. Um, the completion was to be this summer, right? But it fell back behind COVID, and so it might even require some reworking on the contract with the CRC. Uh, I'm. I'm thinking potentially we could be looking at the end of this calendar year or beginning of next calendar year. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Costin, do you wish to speak to the boundary line adjustments? Yes, ma'am. This is uh, an issue that was uh, existing when I got here. I think it's, it's probably a year old. Uh, with the initial request by the town of Crewe for a boundary line adjustment. Um, that request uh, was opposed by uh, the town of Burkeville, by primarily uh, the town of Burkeville seeking the exact same uh, territory uh, outside of their, their limits. Um, there has been a joint work session uh, with uh, representatives of the county and um, the, the, the full board, I should say, uh, staff, uh, representatives of both towns, um, as well as representation from uh, members of the state involved in the uh, ongoing uh, issue of extending a, a water line to serve the state facilities. Um, at the end of the day, the water line issue is still being resolved, still being worked. Uh, different pathways have been discussed and rejected. Uh, other pathways are still being considered. The, the, I have made a, a recommendation to the board to deny uh, both of those boundary line adjustments. Um, the rationale, the, the bottom line rationale for this is uh, whether it's Crew or whether it's Burkeville, it will impact the population uh, count for the county. And what that will do is it will change the funding formula. Uh, and I specifically cite VDOT, but I'm willing to bet it would also impact funding formulas for many other grants and, and funding sources so that the uh, loss of population uh, that's attributed to uh, the geriatric hospital, VCBR, and the prison, uh, although you, you, they aren't users of highways necessarily, uh, they are count. count calculated in those funding formulas. Um, that's going to have a negative impact on the funds that come available to the county. And uh, because of that, I would recommend that the board take action to um, uh, deny the boundary line adjustment for the town of Crewe, and then deny the boundary line adjustment request 
from Burkeville. Uh, both of the localities have the option to pursue um, a more formal process um, of annexation, um, but they would have to carry that them, themselves uh, working with the uh, uh, local government commission. I'd be happy to take any questions you all have at this time. Yep. Um, board yep. members, I, I did want to let you know that as of this afternoon, I was in, re in receipt of a letter from crew mayor Phil Miskovic. He's provided some very detailed responses to the arguments that the county may have for denying crew's request for the boundary line adjustment. He noted that he believes it's premature for the county to oppose the proposal before the involved parties have had an opportunity to further discuss the issue with impacted property owners. Mr. Miskovic has requested that if the board is not inclined to approve Crew's request for a boundary line adjustment, that we continue to table the issue until we can make a decision based on stronger arguments against it. Um, I'm not sure about his arguments. I would recommend that every board member should have the opportunity to see his letter and read his letter. And you may wish to consider tabling this again, but that's... Let me say I, this. I, what, oh, go ahead, Mr. Vaughn. You've been here a long time before I have. <laughs> when Crew first presented this to us, I said to myself, do they understand the generational divide that would happen in this county if we awarded them this boundary adjustment? So most of the board know my feeling on this, that I think we need to deny both because it would only create a division. And we don't need that in a small county like Nottaway. That's how I feel. Thank you. Any comments? Were you going to say something? No, go ahead. No, sorry. <laughs> well, I, I, this is what I was going to say. There's a little, little contradiction going on here. Like I said, whoa, Nelly here. <laughs> um, from my recollection, they wanted us to hurry and vote for it. Now he wants us to slow down some. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm ready to put the motion on the floor, but let's hear what Mr. Roy got to say. <laughs> well, time and time again in public and private conversations, some of you continue to assign blame on crew for past failures to be proactive. That is simply just not fair to the new council and administration that are now trying to move forward, and we should be helping them instead of chastising them for decisions others made in the past. We should recall comments from this board in our recent past that says the new folks stopped the bleeding. Who created the bleeding? Some of you that are critical of them now. So don't say, don't say it's not fair to keep getting kicked when you have acknowledged your failures and are taking steps to make corrective actions, but then continue to hold hostage a town full of Nottaway County citizens who have elected others that are now trying to be proactive. Are some of you going to say it's okay if the county gets VDOT funded off the back of the town of Crewe as long as you can use it where you want to throughout the county? And are you going to say that the citizens in Crewe don't deserve to take a walk on si safe sidewalks because you think the funding the county gets for Crews County road miles should go elsewhere. We should support the towns full of Nottoway County citizens that want to become proactive and flourish. At this time, I believe a corner may have been turned in recent days headed toward a possible, and I say possible, coming together of the towns and the citizens affected by this. I'm asking that we table this for 60 to 90 days to allow the positive, productive conversations I have had with members of both towns and some of the potentially affected citizens as well to come together in an attempt to move forward in a mutually, fully supported way. Are you putting that in the form of a motion? Yes, ma'am. I'll second that for discussion, Madam Chair. Okay. All right. Um, one thing I disagree with Mr. Roark's comments, he keeps saying you, you, you. I represent 3,000 some people. 
And we just talked about rural rustic and roads, and we need that money. I need High Point Road, um, Love's Lane. We had to fix roads over there. Then people were going down hills on dirt roads. So I, I, I just want to say this. It's no you. I'm not, I'm not against crew, but I do have to look out for the citizens that put me in office as well. So I just want to say that to you, John. But I, I hear you on it. I, don't, I, don't, I can't stand this, this three-town divide or what do we have here. It needs to be rectified. We got, we got so many bigger fish to fry. And um, th that's why, and, and, and I'm sucking it for discussion, but really in my heart, I, I agree with Mr. Costa's recommendation just to deny both of them and, um, and let this thing start healing because we got to pull the Band-Aid off sooner or later. We got, we got, we got to make a decision. So that's, that's what I want to speak. But I, but I second his motion for discussion, Madam Chair. Any um, comments, discussion from board members? I'm uh, inclined to go with Mr. Costin's recommendation to deny both. Do you need me to make a to read this? You got a motion on floor. You got and we a motion want to look at two separate motions, one for Burkeville's request. Well, you, have a, you have a motion We have a motion a to the table right now. Well, that's right, I'm sorry. So, and we've got a second. So we have a motion to table this matter for 60 to 90 days and we in a second. Madam Chair, could, uh, to, to Steve's point here, we just put to a six-year plan to public um, uh, discussion next month. How many projects are in the town for in the next six years? None. I mean, are we saying those 2,200 citizens don't matter even though they're counted and this money that's going into this six-year plan is coming off of their back, their road miles as well. Their sidewalks are not safe. Their roads need attending to. But what we're saying is in our six-year plan, crew's not included in it. Not one item. Well, it's it's county. county roads, isn't it? Unpaved roads, rural rustic included that. Okay, so uh, rebuttal question. If I could, I'd like clear, clarify a question here, um, John, uh, Mr. Roark. I'm sorry, I apologize. Call me John. I'm gonna call you Mr. Roark on this one. <laughs> so, Mr. Roark, um, what roads inside a town of Crew is not paved? Well, all the back alleys. I'm not, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not are, are you right? You answered my question. I don't call that a road. I call that an alley. It's an alley. They still utilize it with, with through traffic. So, but my whole thing is it's, you know, there's nothing put on the books to address any of the broken sidewalks for the elderly. I, I, I imagine this. You have a home nurse that wants to take an elderly individual out in a wheelchair and the sidewalks are tore up and they just can't enjoy a good, good spring day. Okay, so we still, we've got on the table a motion to table this for 60 to 90 days, and we have a second. All I'm in, opposed. Sir? I'm really opposed to tabling it. See, we need We're to, getting ready to take a vote on it, Mr. Yes, Vaughn, okay? okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. With the, with all, all in favor what? Because I'm sorry. Tabling, I'm tabling the matter okay. for another 60 to 90 days. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll interrupt No, that's you. all right. Do you mind doing that again? All right. All in favor of tabling the boundary line adjustment matter for a period of 60 to 90 days to allow for further discussion and investigation. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. 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 All right. Well, the opposition has it. All right. Ma Ma Madam Chair, I make a motion that we deny both requests. Let's so do one at a time. This is what he recommended. Yeah. Oh, I thought we. I recommend. I, I recommend one package. at a time because they were made at separate times. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Doctor Cost. <laughs> so let's let's start. Um, do we have a motion relating to the boundary line adjustment for the town of Burkeville? Yeah, you're right. My motion is: as the town of Burkeville boundary line adjustment has received express opposition, citizens and the town of Crew, I move that the Boundary line adjustment requests that the, by the town of Burkeville be denied. I second that motion. 
We have a motion and a second to deny the boundary line uh, adjustment request by the town of Burkeville. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I abstain, Madam Chair. Okay. You want for crew? Yes. Okay. And for the town of crew, as a town of crew boundary line adjustment will negatively impact the county's transportation financing, and there is expressed opposition by both citizens and the town of Burkeville, I move that the boundary line adjustment request by the town of Crewe be denied. All right, we have a motion to deny the boundary line adjustment request by the town of Crewe. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? All uh, in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, any opposed? Aye. Nay. All right. Good discussion. Thank you. The next three items under unfinished business, solar related items four, five, and six. Mr. Costin, do you wish to speak to these agenda items? Uh, Madam Chairman, you, you've, you have a, a most recent revised uh, zoning ordinance before you. This comes from uh, an effort involving um, myself, Mr. Zoni, Mr. Anzavino, along with four um, interested parties, uh, Mr. Mr. Spence being, being one. Uh, we conducted about an hour and a half, almost two hour Zoom meeting and we went through all of the items uh, that were captured uh, in terms of uh, uh, what, what could be better with the ordinance. Um, one of the speakers this evening mentioned the, um, the why is it uh, um, protection around the towns um, and not further out. Uh, as a result of that, that discussion, um, that one mile prohibition was actually dropped. Um, that the rationale behind that originally was that it would um, uh, preserve for uh, what I would say regular normal commercial development in and around the transportation corridors uh, and not take the, the um, um, lands away from that type of development. Um, Whereas the counter argument, the prevailing counter argument was uh, by prohibiting that land, it might drive a project into a less suitable area. Um, so that one mile prohibition uh, went away, although that is very much the standard uh, in, in, in this type of ordinance. So there were multiple um, revisions made. Uh, there is a cover memo from me. Uh, that kind of outlined each and every one of those. Oh, Madam Chair, point of order. Um, I want to address something um, so we so we can uh, ha have this discussion open. Um, a citizen was asking about you uh, uh, abstaining from this, and um, you and I have had a lot of discussions about solar, and and I understand your concern, Miss Scott, and I, I truly appreciate that because often people don't ask for that until after the fact. But in the discussions I have had with her, she has been honest and forthright about where she stands and where the citizens that address her. And I, I would say that I feel confident I will put what credibility, what word I have on her, and I would ask that. Mr. Bork, we we'll call for a five minute recess, please. Okay. I'm sorry. Hold that thought. We'll, okay. we'll return to this okay. thought. I'm sorry. Okay.
We can't talk before a month. Mr. Rourke, I apologize for the interruption. You can pick, go back to your training thought. Yes, ma'am. Like I was saying, um, I, I, I truly appreciate Miss Miss Scott's catch on that, and um, with, with my, my personal discussion, for what it's worth, I will give you my personal reassurances that I know that with, with my discussions with her, that she is completely unbiased, and as I'm, a, I do not have any. The brother does not have any applications in for anything, and so I would ask the other board members for their for their thoughts on that. But I would ask her not to abstain um, for, 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 uh, from any votes with this. Mr. Costing, would you speak to possible potential uh, for conflict yeah, here? This is this issue of, of a conflict uh, was brought up last uh, last meeting, and. Uh, I had reserved a spot in my uh, in my report to speak to it. So let me speak specifically to um, uh, this issue as it uh, affects the, the, the chair or any member of the board, actually. Um, the conflict standard is, uh, is there going to be a financial gain? Um, and is there going to be a, uh, the next question would be, is there going to be a financial gain um, by a member of the immediate family. An immediate family is defined as someone who lives in the same house with you. Um, I understand you know, Ms. Shuckman and I have talked about this as well. Um, she, uh, her brother and his wife own some land. They've, they've admitted that they you know, are interested in pursuing a project, um, but that has no financial benefit uh, to Ms. Shuckleton. She is not a joint owner with them in the property. Uh, so there'd be no, no conflict uh, in, in that matter. Let me reemphasize, we are not talking about any specific site application. We're talking about an entire amendment to the zoning ordinance that will have countywide implications. Um, I'd be happy to take any other questions that you have on that matter. Mr. Costin, this is a topic around which there is strong public opinion and one that I believe warrants an opportunity for board discussion prior to us putting any motions on the floor. If the board will consent, I'll put my thoughts out on the table and then we'll go around. Um, while I recognize the importance of developing alternate forms of energy and understand that solar facilities may provide additional streams of revenue for the county, I do have some concerns and some questions. When I consider what appears to be an overall rapid shift in policies and regulations, such as the DEQ's recent changes to requirements for managing stormwater runoff, uh, such as recent regulatory guidance implemented by the governor, when we consider the strong potential for even more revisions to state laws that will require additional impact analysis by the DEQ, when we consider reports of some high profile cases regarding stormwater violations that resulted in settlements and fines, when we consider published reports that emphasize the importance of having a robust understanding 
of the strategies and design practices that affect stormwater management, I can't help but question whether I, as a member of this board or the board collectively, whether we have enough confidence about our own level of knowledge to move forward with solar projects while making sure that we avoid regulatory violations or other pitfalls. I've read recent articles um, about damage to secondary roads leading to solar sites in Halifax County, the impact of heavy truck traffic making roads nearly impassable, and reports that VDOT had to send crews out on nearly a daily basis to repair damage. Do we know anything about the weight limits on our sec for our secondary roads? Um, reports that some counties, such as Mecklenburg, that are now tightening up their solar ordinances, and I question whether are there new concerns or issues that are leading to this. When I read a report about Louisa County, um, significant stormwater runoff, and um, two members of the Board of Supervisors being quoted, one recorded as saying it's pretty catastrophic and another saying, we can't let anybody clear 1,100 acres for this purpose ever again. How confident are we right now that this won't be us? I don't know what's right or wrong about the solar. I do think it would be wise for us to determine what legal avenues are available, if any, so that can, we could at least temporarily halt the acceptance and processing of solar applications until the regulatory environment at least has a chance to stabilize. Um, and I'm assuming we would have to consult legal counsel to d determine what our options would be. Uh, thank you for allowing me the opportunity of that. Um, Mr. Vaughn, you have any thoughts on this? I'll come back right now. <coughs> Ms. Shackleton, like you said, it's a lot that we don't know. Um, and it's a lot, and we have a lot of people that are against us doing this at this time. Um, and I take in consideration of all of that. And maybe we do need to wait and not rush into what we're doing. Mr. Bowen? So, uh, first, I want to apologize to the um, to the citizens, I did miss the work session last week. I mean, and I tell you what happened. I went to visit my um, daughter in Texas, and um, of course, after you do the river walk and then you see a desert, you get tired of just looking at desert. But I, I love Texas. I'm glad they're part of a, a great country. Golly, she's gonna kill me. She can see this thing, can't she? So, but anyway, when I started having some extra time, I started digging. I said, you know. Um, Mr. Anzavino did a really good job with it, with it, getting the information together. And, um, but one thing he kept saying, he said, you know, we uh, said that um, once the zoning ordinance was in effect that we were going to lift the moratorium. And I kept thinking, I don't know if I said that. I mean, did we say that? So I, poured, I started going through the minutes and, um, to see what we say it, you know. And, and I say we, and i got to say that word very carefully because... Um, Ms. Shackleton, I'm going to say Ms. Shackleton because Noel was on the board at that time, and John, you were not on the board. You were, you were actually, come, actually, the minutes I found, July, July 18th, it says John Roark, Mr. Roark continues to suggest the current Nottoway County Board of Supervisors operates under the good old boy system. That's, that's in the minutes. Thank you, John. But, um, and, um, but I'll say that because I, I, I read that because the news, the news coverage we get um, that, it was an election year, and people were wondering who was going to get elected, and, and we, we watched that, and that, we watched that, but we don't watch the stuff that's going on behind the scenes. Nobody, the, the, July, it was July 18th in the minutes, and you go on back, and this was when I say, um, it says here, um, when, I, when I talk about Supervisor Shackleton, it's, it's Noel, so I want to clarify that. Planning Commission, Administrator Roark informs the commission did not meet for July, but explains to Chairman Bowen, so I was chairman at that time, July 18th, recently attended an informative meeting on solar energy farms. We actually went to another county to go to that training. And based on information provided, he suggests the board consider a moratorium on any future applications until the board can be fully educated on ramifications of approval. Supervisor Shelkerton, and that was Noel, moves in favor of the moratorium on any future applications for a solar farm. The motion was carried and it was 5-0. So, um, 
So I thought, okay, so we put the moratorium, and we said we needed some more education. So I went further in the minutes. You know, I go to the next month because I was planning. I know I was the chairman, and I wondered what we end up doing. And um, sure, sure enough, the, the, our first work session was August 14th. So it was the very next month before the regular board meeting. And it says, Ch Chairman Bowen stated the purpose of this work session would receive a presentation on allowing util utility solar farms in the locality. And see, I think when I'm getting back again, I don't know, some of this stuff, when it's on the last page of the newspaper, people don't really think we're working on anything, but we are. We were. Um, I introduced a gentleman named Wayne Carter, who's administrator of Mecklenburg County. So I'm not going to read all of it, but I'll just say this part. Mr. Carter urges that any consideration of a solar farm applicant should include a thorough review of county board and staff to ensure such a project is in line with the county's comprehensive plan. He did not say the zoning ordinance. He said the comprehensive plan. Chairman Bourne interjects that not a way needs to go get on top of the comprehensive plan. All right. So we come to the board meeting, August 22nd, 2019. Now, Know this, people come in here, they're trying to get elected for November, and that's where your coverage is, okay? And you go to the very last page of August 22nd, when we have time to speak, I said as chairman, Chairman Bowen suggests the board not consider lifting the moratorium on solar farms until such time as the county's comprehensive plan is completely updated and approved. I said that and I need to stand behind that, okay? I said that in a public meeting. Now, now I'm talking to the board now. Now I'm going to talk to the citizens back again. So I got, I got to know this. So the planning commission, and I don't want, you know, I want people to know that we have a great planning commission, and I think um, Mr. Ingram had made, said, made a comment about we, a lot of people love this county. We got people on that planning commission that they're uh, farmers, forestry department, business owners, um, um, and th these are the type, these type men and women, and a school teacher. And um, but anyway, they, we sent out a survey to find out what is the pulse of the county, and it was in the newspaper. This is October twenty seventh. It looked like this, and I'm not gonna put anybody on the spot, but I want to know. I, I need to know that everybody. Can, can you raise your hand if you did not know anything about the survey? Okay, okay. All right, that's, you answered that question. And this is a few people, and that's right, you, you look at, you see the hands, so. But let me say this, it was hard to advertise for the survey. You know, you could put it in the paper, but COVID is going on, people are not going to the library. Some people do not have computer, you know, and, I, and I, that, that hit me when I was like, and so 151 people answered the survey out of 15,000 people we got in the county. Okay, 151. Uh, take me and my wife out, that's 149, okay? So, but anyway, um, I want us to read a little summary of it, okay, to you. And so, and what I'm getting at is this is the thing that the planning commission was going, that's, that's how they started making recommendations because they're trying to get a feel for what the people did in the survey, even though it's not a lot of people. Um, his his here's some summaries that it's written by CRC and it's a draft because it's I don't think it's out yet completely because we still got draft everything's drafted. It says throughout the survey on other questions, respondents cited a desire. Well, let me back up. One thing we found out is the survey respondents skewed older of the 151 respondents, which is about 58.3 percent. It was people that was 50 and older. Okay, so that kind of tells you. Bedroom community, we, we, we've been living here for years, kind of like uh, Mr. Ingram has brought up, Ms. Scott, you know, I, you know people who, who likes, who's retired and likes being here. Throughout the survey on other questions, respondents cited a desire to keep Nottoway County rural and prevent it from becoming more suburban urban. A loss of community character was also cited as a factor that would prompt residents to leave the county. Another statement that came out, at the same time, because respondents wanted to see more single-family housing, affordable housing for young professional workers and housing for the seniors and the elderly. At the same time, the respondents want to see open agricultural spaces preserved. Okay. But here's the sticky wicky. <laughs> Here we are. Now, here's where the rubber meets the road. 
There was also a desire to see tax rates to stay low. This was expressed throughout the surveys and cited as very important, not just important, very important, by resp respondents in, in respect to future growth and development in the county. And I, and, I, and I want you to know that's, that's what the information, the planning commission is trying to make des decisions for this county. You know, and I don't know if we can do it. It's going to cost us money, okay? Um, but I do feel like we, don't, we didn't have good representation on the survey. And I'm just wondering. So I think two things that I think we need to consider. One of them is put that survey back out there again. Put that survey and let him somehow figure out to get people, I don't know how to do it, to get people to speak your opinion so we can hear what you got to say. The other thing I think we need to do, somebody said, have you seen a, I don't know who it was, somebody in here said, you know, have you seen a um, solar power, I mean solar farm? And, and um, I said, yeah, I was thinking my heart, I said, yeah, I've seen one. But did I really see it? Did I get out the car and walk behind it and look around? And the answer to that is no. And I'm wondering, I bet none of us has actually got out of a vehicle and walked on, you have. Yes, sir. I, I think Mr. I, I think, and it, I don't know how Mr. Costa can orchestrate that because this, this is these are the kind of things that just drive me nuts of elected official. All five of us can't get in no vehicle and ride down the road because we're having a meeting, you know. But I sure wish we could figure out how Mr. Costa can orchestrate without getting arrested, being on somebody's land. <laughs> and it's probably you probably don't need to see the owner who's got this probably who's got the, the farm is probably the neighbors around the farm is probably where you need to put your gum boots on and take a walk and put some stuff with ticks because um, it's going to be out there. But my personal opinion right now, I feel like we need to table it because I said in a public meeting and my father, um, it, it, I miss very dear, he said if you, if, you don't, if you can't stick to your word, don't stick to anything. And he said he said to me, don't forget where you come from. And I don't know if I'm going to run again. I'm, I'm really, it's, it's exhausting, really. You know, you go to these meetings and you get tired of it. But I will say this, I'm going to give it 100%. And I do, Mr. Mr. Ingram, I do love this county very much. My whole family, we, I was raised here. So I think we at least owe it to the citizens to get out the damn car <laughs> and walk around there and look at one somewhere. Because I, I say it again. They, the media can sway, and I heard articles, but that's the media talking. Steve Bourne wants to see it, you know, and I think Helen needs to see it, and I think, Lynn, you need to see it, all of us need to see it before we put a vote on this floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, for that indulgence. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Bourne, some time ago you mentioned, I can't remember the month, but that it should be part of the comprehensive plan. And I still feel like it should be part of the comprehensive plan. And we haven't finished that yet. Right. And I think we need to table this until we can do that. And maybe visit some solar farms. Yeah, we, I, I've, I've seen two or three, but I agree with you. I have not gotten out to Go up close. Right. <laughs> I haven't seen it. Mr. Walker, you got some comments? Yes, ma'am. Uh, first of all, I had questions for legal to publicly answer tonight, and we don't have legal, legal here tonight. And um, uh, some of what I had drafted here is, was strictly dependent upon that. Um, first and foremost, the citizens don't want it, and I work for them. With the recent events, which include the statements and requests from the governor's office, the fire at the facility in Greensville County, the miscalculations of water runoff from panels by DEQ. I feel we no longer have the most important, up-to-date, and critical information that we need to make an informed decision at this time. I have been on both sides of the fence with solar, but the deciding factor is the citizens don't want it here at this time, and I work for them. I am prepared to make a motion for Nottoway County to formally request the General Assembly to allow Nottoway to ban solar in the county until such time as the governing body sees fit to change that without further intervention from the General Assembly. Speaking to that, if granted by the General Assembly, Nottoway would have time to survey all of its citizens in the future, grants time for us to collect data, 
and research and allow DEQ and the state to move forward to improve and implement better policies and procedures for the solar facilities and it gives our citizens peace of mind. After multiple conversations with our citizens, and some of you in here tonight, matter of fact, well, I was on the phone with Ms. Long after midnight last night, so, but she's gone. I concur with them that the proposed ordinance needs to be more restrictive to include, but not limited to, the total percentage of county acreage somewhere around 1% allowed for solar facilities. If solar is encouraged, it should be located near industrial sites that already exist. Small facilities would be 50 acres or less. Large facilities would be 51 to 100 acres. Maximum size would be 100 acres. A minimum of 10 miles apart, double the setbacks and application fees for small facilities would be $15,000 and large would be $25,000. This is the biggest land use change in Ottawa since Fort Pickett was built, I believe. We have to get the ordinance right if adopted and the citizens don't want it. Each application will have a constant flow of citizens in opposition. We must protect our prime wildlife as well as the most valuable wildlife areas and prime industrial sites for economic development. Not solar. Not sure if I mentioned to you or not, but the citizens don't want it and we work for them. I am further prepared to make a motion tonight to eliminate our current solar facility ordinance per statement from county attorney so we can eliminate, for the lack of a better term, taking any applications because we have no ordinance, therefore keeping solar out of Nottaway until a later time. I further believe that the real possibility exists that any more prolonging of this will see a possible attempt of a solar company trying to push through an application under the current ordinance, which we simply cannot allow as the current ordinance is junk. And by the way, say it with me, the citizens don't want it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Mr. Rourke, the motions you said you're ready to put on the floor, do we need legal opinion about what our options are before we make motions related to what we're going to do? Yes, ma'am. I mean, I believe it was clear that Ms. Giles said that if we eliminate the current ordinance, that there's no ordinance to take applications. Therefore, for lack of a better term, it eliminates us processing this. However, I, I believe that whether you have an ordinance in place or you have a junk ordinance in place, I believe someone's going to make an attempt. That, that, that's you need to understand, as Mr. Page brought up, being a Dillon rule state where we actually stand on this. Right. So what, what, did, what action do you uh, want to take? Uh, Mr. Costin, I'm sorry, um, go ahead. While we do not have legal present, we have legal contacting me. <laughs> Figured that might wake him up. So, so I've, been I've been listening. So, <laughs> so Mr. You didn't call uh, me doctor. I heard that. <laughs> Madam Chairman, I, I, I'll, just, I'll just second for discussion. I'm just second. Okay. Okay. Second. What, what is the motion? You mentioned two motions. Oh, which I, I good. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Steve, let's get, get legal advice before we... Well, we're supposed to have discussion. We don't, we're supposed to have... Okay. But I can always withdraw the motion. And we have to have more discussion? Yes. Okay. okay. All right. I'll, I'll withdraw them on the second. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm saying afterwards. We don't have to go to a vote. I can withdraw the motion after we have discussion. Okay. All right. I misunderstood you. Okay. What is the motion? The motion would be to, let's see, eliminate the current ordinance. And I, I second that just for the for the discussion. Why well, not, Mr. Costin is getting legal advice. Madam Chair, can we get more discussion? Pardon? I second it, so we yes, can have discussion. Got, right, we have a motion and a second. All right. So, discussion. have you got anybody yet? Are you? Um, I can. I can, them folks a lot I can. I can relay what I've got here. Uh, this is from Miss Giles. She's listening. Um, that would not be appropriate. <laughs> it would not be necessary or appropriate to make any request of the state. This is a local issue only. Mr. Page was completely incorrect on that issue. That notion would not be appropriate, I think motion or notion. It was, okay, I think now we're getting to the, the present issue of repealing the present motion. And I conveyed the same information to the board in a separate communication. 
the motion uh, would not be appropriate because it was not advertised to rescind the current okay. ordinance. It was to rescind and adopt. Okay. Okay. So you cannot do half. So um, I would also, um, she's still firing at me. Also for rescinding any current motion, each zoning district would need to be reviewed to remove solar as a use, either by right or uh, conditional use permit. So basically, um, a motion to repeal the existing uh, provisions in the zoning ordinance that are existing right now, that basically the moratorium has been placed on, a motion to repeal that tonight is not in order, it hasn't been advertised, it hasn't been subject to okay. public hearing. Okay. So now, if you want to change the motion and direct staff to proceed in that direction, you can, but that means next month you, you have the public hearing in, with the Planning Commission in, in the Board of Supervisors. Madam Chair, I withdraw my motion and prepare a new motion as, as, as uh, stated by uh, Administrator Costin. And I'm sorry to ask, but would you... Sure. No, 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 don't be sorry to ask, because I, I, I got to hear this one myself. Okay. I'm trying to get my head straight. The, the appropriate motion would be to direct staff to proceed to amend the zoning ordinance to repeal the solar provisions. Where, wherever they, are, they occur, wherever they're specified in the zoning ordinance, it, you would be repealing those. That would be the appropriate to proceed to amend the zoning ordinance. To repeal. To repeal. So moved. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second for discussion only. Okay. <laughs> Can you stop laughing? <laughs> you give me the giggles tonight. Yeah, I, I got I to gotta have, I gotta, we got to talk about this thing. Because we're, so here we are, if we're not careful, when I'm, I'm going back to a comprehensive plan. I want to hear, I mean, I hear, I, I know I can make people mad out there, but there's still 15,000 other people. I mean, there's people who are calling me too that's in favor of it, but most of them, I don't know. Anyway, I'll shut up, but they may own some land, you know. But I, I, um, my, 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 this is why I have trouble understanding. Um, you need to bang the gavel. Yeah, I can't. Please refrain from discussion while the meeting is going on. Th this is, I'm going by, um, uh, was it Jer Jerry? Is he here? Jerry, Jerry, Spence. Jerry, Jerry Spence. Spence. I'm going by Jerry Spence. Thank you, Jerry. I'm sorry. I don't, and I'm not putting you on the spot. I'm going by his comment. Um, what, what, that's what I can't, I can't get that wrapped right in my head. It's because Wayne Carter told us that the comprehensive plan, and, and, and I'm, I, Ms. Giles, keep firing back and tell me if I'm right or wrong. <laughs> but if Wayne Carter told us that night that we had to get that comprehensive plan right, which one is the train and which one is the caboose? Is the zoning ordinance the caboose or is the comprehensive plan the train? I, 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 and that's what I want to know. That's why I can't get it wrapped right around my head. That's why I wanted legal here tonight to answer some of those questions, yeah. Yeah, uh, historically, the comprehensive plan has been the um, community's vision for the future. The zoning ordinance, as well as the sub, well, subdivision ordinance to a lesser extent, but the zoning ordinance implements that vision in a variety of ways, where we want businesses, where we want growth, where we want industrial growth. That is the engine driving the zoning ordinance. So, so in a matter of speaking, we didn't put the cart in front of the horse. I, I, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I got, so. Yes, sir, Mrs. Odie. Thank you. So thank you, though, Greg. I'm sorry. Let's, she's up there. Yeah, yeah. All right, if I may. Oh, and I'll, I'll wait in on this as, as, a, as a land use planning guy uh, from uh, Ms. Giles, ordinances are binding. The comp plan is not. The comp plan is a guide. It is not a binding enforceable document. Um, and that's what she says. The comp plan is guidance only. Um, and I have shared with the board my experiences in Matthews going through a suit where the comprehensive plan said one thing, the zoning ordinance said something slightly different, the zoning decision was made under that zoning ordinance, although the comprehensive plan said something else, the county was in the process of now aligning the comprehensive plan to the zoning ordinance. That, that specific case 
went to the Virginia Supreme Court and the county prevailed because it had evidence that it was the zoning ordinance was the newer document. It was adjusting to the community's newer needs. And they were working on a comprehensive plan that furthered the zoning ordinance. So, yes, in a theoretical perfect world, the comprehensive plan is the horse, the zoning ordinance is the cart. But there are often times where those two, where the horse ends up pushing the cart. Madam Chair, if I may, just, just for clarification here. I understand the ordinance is binding, but we can remove. What I'm looking for is to get to removing, get to the process to, re, to remove that ordinance. These citizens do not want it, um, and there's not enough information out here. I want to get to the opportunity to remove it, but what, um, this is a gut feeling. I believe someone's going to try to sneak one in the back door once we remove it. If, if you were... If we remove what we have now, then we're going to go back to our original, and that is bad. Right. Well, the original so one is the one I'm talking about repealing. That's my understanding. The one, oh, okay. The not, current not one the, in place. Right. Not the proposed one, the current one. Okay. Okay, you protect it. I got you. Sir. Mm -hmm. I got you. This, this is why I'm saying this, this process that's in front of you this evening is a repeal and replace. You've not advertised just to repeal. So you've got to go back through the process to advertise the repeal. And, and Madam Chairman, if I may, that section of the zoning ordinance speaks to solar and wind. Just so the staff you know, has a clear direction here, do you want removal of solar only or solar and wind? Both. I heard both, so unless somebody um, says something different, that's where staff would go if that's the well, first decision. What Mr. Bowen said, with the surveys that went out, we only got a few back. And what you were saying was send the surveys back out again. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and I think what John is, Mr. Royal John, I'm, calling, I'm sorry, John, I'm just gonna, you know, we're in a public meeting here. But what John is saying, I guess, is what I'm feeling him out here. He's, he's saying basically take it out but he didn't say that. I wish the motion would have been, okay, we're going to take it out until the comprehensive plan gets black, and then we would re see revisit that, yeah. it. I, yeah. But that, it would give us that. It, was, it would give us that ability, because that's what I was talking about. You could send the survey back out. It would give you that time to send the survey back, wait for the comprehensive plan. It, it, it just does all it, that. It, this, as I understand it, is our only option to temporarily suspend the solar applications and processing and, until at a time that we wanted to proceed with it? Or? Yeah. Is that for but, all By the way, I want to clarify something. Bond? Well, what are we talking about? Because other people no, are applying for, mm -hmm. like, solar for their homes. Are we talking about mm -mm. No. all solar? The facilities. The multi-acre facilities, not residential. So now we're, now we're distinguishing. Right. The, the small individual home yeah, yeah, yeah. solar from the even small project or large project. Absolutely. If some, what somebody wants to do with their house, they should be able to do. Well, well, but you got you got to define. You're gonna have to you define, define that define somehow. That you got to define. Sense, that, that's you know, that's all why. Solar. You have that's fine. And that mean that'll take away from everybody from people that want to put solar in their home. That's right. I ain't I ain't fooling with that. <laughs> you need to chill out. Hold on for a minute. <laughs> so, it, it man, does, this thing is tough. It does complicate. It's to it try to start zigzagging the line between this is okay, th mm -hmm. this is not okay. Might I recommend the board defer this for 30 days? We can get legal opinion and come back with a number of options for you all that basically says you can repeal. And to the to a limited degree, and maintain the individual home option, or repeal in totality. Um, uh, I'm good with that. I withdraw my motion. Okay. I'm gonna have gray hair on this one, man. I you already got it. Somebody lying to you. You don't think you do? <laughs> All right. So, do we want to put another motion on the floor about <laughs> deferring this? I put a motion on the floor to defer. Till next month's regular meeting, 
so we can get legal advice and clear clarification options. On, and options on repeals. All right, Mr. Rourke has made a motion to defer this the solar topics until next month's regular meeting as we await um, legal advice and clarification. Do we have a second? I second that motion. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right. Madam Matters. Chairman, not to drag this out anymore, but if you all, would you like for staff to also pursue to see if we can get a site visit? Uh, it, it's doable. It's much like going to Vaco. Sure. Uh, yeah, where we yes. have to announce yes. Yes. where we're going, advertise it, that's, that sort of thing. Um, we'll see if <coughs> we can expand the party a little bit, see if members of the press want to come, see if a couple of the you know, um, uh, citizens, we, we can't transport everybody. We would certainly transport the board. But see if we can do a uh, a site visit. Okay. Let, let that be a part of John's motion. Well, the staff, the staff could work on that. Yes, yeah. that's fine. Okay. okay. And, and I, I know, I, Madam Chairman, speak stuff. freely. I mean, we've been we've been talking about this thing since 2019, 2000. And I got to tell the citizens, you know, um, you know, you know, just going back and looking back at what happened since 2019, I will be the first to tell you that I was. I was looking at the revenue for the county so we wouldn't have to raise taxes. I, I, I'll confess and tell you that's a God honest truth. And, um, but I was surprised about how many people has called me and told me, Steve, I'd rather you raise taxes. Yep. They said it. And I don't know if we can put that on the survey or not. <laughs> but that's a tough, it's a tough balance. People want services. Mm -hmm. But you got services cost money. And that's what, we, that's what we're here for. But we've got to figure this out. I just want to share that, Madam Chair. All right, we're ready to move on. Convenience center operation. Uh, just, but just for clarification, okay. the solar revenue and the solar key ordinance, same same perspective. Yes. Thirty days. Okay. Great. Okay. Convenience center operations. Convenience center operations. Um, they don't kill me. I can find that here. Okay. Um, I think the, the memo is pretty self-explanatory, but basically um, following your last meeting, the, uh, the board indicated uh, was concerned about the hours of operation and what happened to a trial base extension. Um, minutes from subsequent meetings show that discussion, but no concrete action being taken. I've spoken with Mr. Easter. I've spoken to a couple of the conven convenience center operators, um, and there was an ongoing um, survey, if you will, of folks that actually utilize the convenience facilities during those extended hours. Uh, staff at that time deemed that there was not sufficient enough activity to um, continue the trial basis and return to the normal hours. Um, there was apparently no return back to the board to give you that information, to give you that result and let you know what happened. Um, so I'm doing that this evening. Um, you have the methodology that was used. It was pretty simple. After six o'clock, folks did tick marks and they put it on their time sheets and those were reviewed and uh, tabulated. Just, it was rec uh, just found not to be uh, worth the effort. Um, I will as that you recall, even before this issue came up, I've been recommending, uh, citing the concerns with the landfill cost and that extended hours do, do have an impact. I've recommended a motion that, the, that recognizes that the temporary adjustment to convenience center hours, that that trial period be ended and that the convenience center hours be uh, maintained as they are presently, uh, and that's all set out there. Um, really, there's only one difference, and it's in the it's in the daylight savings time, um, where um, it's extended for one hour. Everything else uh, is is the same. Two to five, thirty on Sundays, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, eight thirty to seven, Saturday, seven to five thirty, closed Tuesday and Thursday. The only difference at standard time is that Monday, Wednesday, and Friday it closes at six p.m. Staff recommendation is that you recognize the trial period is over and that these are the standard existing hours. 
Happy to take any questions. Are there any questions for uh, just a comment? I, I just, I'm just just a comment, I, and I'm, I'm I agree with you, Mr. Costa. But I just wanted people to know <laughs> I've witnessed it up at 723. I saw, uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna refer to her as Grandma. Grandma gets out the car on Tuesday, gets her cane out, opens the back door, gets her trash, and walks right around that fence. <laughs> she squeezed in there, took her trash on Tuesday, and put it in there. Now, I know you probably would have said, Steve, you should have jumped on her, but she was a grandma. <laughs> and um, she was trying to get rid of her trash. And I, and, and, but I, I, think, I wonder how many people are doing that. You know what I mean? I, oh, just, yeah. I, I witnessed it, and it was kind of late in the evening. But um, I, I'll go ahead and move to discontin discontinue any of uh, all temporary adjustments to convenience center hours and subject, as always, to the board's continued ability to revise and adjust to changing conditions established for daylight saving time. To follow, oh, that ain't the motion. I reckon. No, that, that is the motion. Yeah, okay. that is the motion. I second that motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any right. more discussion? Madam Chair, just one, of course. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. All right. <laughs> I believe that they are going to eliminate daylight savings time. Okay. Can we go ahead and just establish it from 8.30 to 7 and just leave it be and not worry about changing anything? We won't, oh, have I see going. we won't have to revisit it when they change when they eliminate daylight savings time. We won't have to change our signs and pay for any new signages or anything like that. We can just leave it because once you get in the daylight savings time, six o'clock is dark. It's dark at quarter after five, twenty minutes after five, so they're already in the dark. So, but for the convenience of the citizens, if we could just go ahead and just eliminate that change in that hour, I would I would vote to approve it. If I could just make sure. one informational statement, mm -hmm. we already have separate signs. So you said about having to change the signs. The, we mm -hmm. already had the signs. It's just a matter just of says it on rehanging them. Yeah, it's just a matter of rehanging them. Um, but you know, yeah. that one hour is times five times a person. I'm going to appeal to y'all one more time, and I'll leave it alone. Okay. <laughs> but y'all remember. Seven, seven, and seven. Okay, we had that discussion. Okay, and Steve, you said, John, you got any wiggle room? This is a lot of wiggle room. Can we just leave it at seven on those three days and and be done with it? So are you are you putting this in the form of a motion? Well, I'm gonna have to amend my motion. Well, so if, what, if so he's willing, then he could amend his motion. motion. So you you want to. Let me back up. Do you want to move the seven to six, or you want both of them seven o'clock? Uh, it, it's it's not going. You, you aren't going to ever be able to please everyone. Right. Right. On the Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, the change from eight thirty to six. I just would like to leave it from eight thirty to seven. Let, let it stay like it is. Yeah, year long, year round, eight thirty to seven, instead of splitting it at the change of the time. Are we at the point we can have discussion on this? We. Mm -hmm. You got a, did we ever get a second? Yeah, this? I thought yeah, this, I thought this a was a motion and a second. So, so, so moving it to 7 o'clock, though, is where they're showing no activity from after 6. Is that correct? That was correct. That These they, are additional wages at each convenience center? Yes, what, yes ma'am. Well, all right, Madam Chair, I follow where you're going with that, but if, but if that's the consensus, then why even put 7 o'clock on that for part of the year? Follow what I'm saying? I agree, yeah. So no, you don't lost me. Say it again. But see, you got the first part where it's 8.30 to 7 p.m. If right. 7 p.m. it's not working, then we should either leave it from 8.30 to 6 or 8.30 to 7. And just not do the change in the hours. Keep a standard hours yes, and just move on and stand out. Yep. And what Mr. Costa is saying, if you go to 7, you get, you, it's an hour for each part. It's, it's more costly. It's, 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 if we just do 6, and you'll be okay with that. What, well, I... I've talked to people at three different oh, Lord. convenience centers, <laughs> and, and they don't want any change. Sherman don't like change. <laughs> but but essentially, it is a change because we had two seven to sevens. <laughs> right, it is You're a right. change. You're right. And from a cost savings perspective, <laughs> from a cost savings perspective, 
I would do the seven. I do the six. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's what he's saying. He's I just want to leave it on one hour where we're not changing because. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought you were moving. No. I thought you were moving the standard time from six to seven. You're saying. Well, I was trying to sneak board, that hour in. Across the yeah, board you at six. I was. Yeah, 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 I was trying to sneak it in, but yeah. across the board, maintain the standard time regardless oh, yes. of daylight savings time. Correct. Okay. I will. I, Oh, that's that's why I had that nice sub, that that language in there about subject uh, uh, subject to uh, adjusted changing conditions. Mm -hmm. That's why I had that in there because right. I mean, I was anticipating doing away with the the nation going away from right, and we can just go ahead and get it done and get ahead of the yeah. nation. How about that? We're ahead of the federal government. I'm going to amend your motion, Mr. Yeah, Boyd. yes, ma'am. I'll amend my motion to. I can't believe it's agreeing with this guy. To, to 8.30 to um, 6 on both uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Is right? Yes, sir. Okay. Good point. We I have the amended motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. <laughs> All right, we have a motion. I have a problem with that, John. I'm for, well. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show. Yeah, seven o'clock, man. Most people are killing time. They can even watch Jeopardy. I think. Or, 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 Don't or, you want to go home? He's already seconded. <laughs> uh, we have a motion and a second relating to the convenience center hours. Um, any further discussion? Mm -mm. All in favor? Uh, aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion passes. All right. We'll go next. Building Appeals Board, Mr. Lewis. Madam Chairman, as Mr. Lewis steps up, let me just recognize him. That apparently, I found out earlier this evening, this was his first time that he's ever been to a board meeting. Oh, welcome. All right. Congratulations. Do, Thank you for me into this. Yes. Do not grade it, okay? Don't grade it. <laughs> welcome to the nosebleed. Yeah, we, uh, we have amended the group of five that we, last time we didn't represent all of the different districts. So now I think we've got a, a, a group, and it covers the basic uh, groups that the code calls for. It was supposed to be uh, at least one um, registered design professional, at least one um, building contractor, and at least one property manager. I believe we have two property manager, no, one property manager, uh, two Class A contractors, and we've got one um, land surveyor and one retired electrical engineer, all right. which would cover the uh, RDPs. Okay. So I believe, and I think all five of your districts are representative this time. And we do have one from the original board from that expired in 2018. And we're recommending the uh, code requires that never more than um, half the board ends their term in one time. So recommending um, a term of, I believe it's three years for two of them, four years for two of them, and five years for one of them. Um, you can change however you want that to work out. But then after that, it would always be a five-year term. So no more than two of them will ever be. Um, expire at the same time. Okay. And then once they, their term expires, you can renew their terms or vote somebody else in, however you want to do it. Okay. But um, it's just up for your consideration. Any questions for Mr. Lewis about this? No, ma'am. Do we have a motion relating to the recommendations for the Board of Building Appeals? Madam Chair, do we need to repeal the previous one? If I may, the, the previous one is some, some, somewhat suspect. Um, we were under the impression that there was no board. Mm -hmm. uh, some former staff members reached out to us and provided us with a list. And Mr. Lewis noted everybody on that board was appointed at the same time. That's not, that shouldn't have been the case. Yes. They all expired in May of 2018. That shouldn't have been the case by code, correct? correct. And then also um, the board never met. As far as we know, they never met, never elected a chairman never had a secretary because the secretary would have had to have been one of the secretaries in our office hmm. and so, as far as we know they never met yeah so we really didn't have a board no so really it wasn't formed it really second. wasn't formed up so this is kind of like a clean state a clean slate start okay because i remember we took a vote on the previous body right about a month or two ago no, no. That, that was old. That, no, yeah, no. I, that's, that, that's no. Table, okay. that group right. was probably put together for you. It, he was elected, I bet you. That, yeah, I came to that. It was the one we he did, voted against. We, it was the we, one you voted against. We we had a yeah. we had a proposed slate, we and it was we had, we were asked to go back 
to try to get equal district rep representation. Oh, right. Yeah, because oh, okay. he voted. I'm talking about that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so you all did not act on that okay. slate. Okay. Yeah. This is sure. a, a slightly revised slate to get that equal representation across the board. I want to put two boards in effect, that's all. No, we don't have two boards in effect. Okay. One, one member from this board did come from that last board. Okay. And all these people have been asked. They are agreeable to be on the board if you so choose. Were you chasing a rat over there? Is it? <laughs> Oh, my Lord. Oh. <laughs> so, I'm going home. All right. You deal with too many critters, John. <laughs> Did we get a motion on the floor relating to the recommendation? Yes, ma'am. I, I, I move to approve. Uh, um, and, you, and then we have a motion and a second. All right. All in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. Uh. Any opposed? All right, the motion passes. Uh, we approve the recommendation for appointments to the Board of Building Appeals. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Mr. Constantine, have you got a broadband update for us? Yes, ma'am. It's very simple. I, what I conveyed to you all is a copy of an email that I received uh, just before the packet deadline. Um, this is the, uh, and I did not include the agreement because uh, it was under review by county legal staff. There were some revisions that were suggested, so I have sent it back. This agreement is between the county, the West Piedmont Planning District Commission in River Street, which is going to carry the uh, broadband, uh, the initial broadband effort. Um, so I would hopefully have this before you next month complete, ready to, ready to uh, for you all's uh, uh, direction for, for the, the staff to sign, sign this agreement. I'll also let you know that earlier this week, I went up to Orange County and attended uh, uh, Representative Spanberger's Broadband Summit, and there will be more uh, federal uh, money coming down, opportunities for broadband expansion. But right, this is, the, this is actually the agreement that the, the night that you all uh, named me as the county administrator, this is that broadband that the, you committed to then. The VITA grant? Yes, this is that. Having got in that grant, this is the agreement to partner and pursue. Now, did, did they give us a date to start, a start date? Uh, their start date will be as soon as initially when all the, all the localities that are, on, are, are part of this West Piedmont effort, when they all sign off on that agreement, that's when they'll start. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Constantine. Um, Mr. Rourke, Cox Road update. Yes, ma'am. Madam Chair. Um, I want to put a motion on the floor to allow the town of Blackstone to construct a portable, potable water line along Cox Road in the county due to health concerns of adjacent property owners. In doing so, the county grants permission for Blackstone to determine mandated connections and move forward at the town's determined timeline. Permission is from the town limits to the Fort Pickett entrance on Cox Road. Um, board members, Cox Road is in my district and I'm working on that. And it, Mr. Rourke represents. We probably need to get a second on the floor. Well, look, I'll second for discussion. So go okay. hear what Mr. Mr. Bond's got to say too. So right. I'm sorry, Mr. Bond. So I even talked with uh, Todd Fortune at, at, at CRC yesterday. Um, I will be making the motion to do that. Mr. Rourke wants to get in into my district and everyone else's district, and. He can say people are asking him to do it. I'm the one to make that motion. I represent that district. Madam Chair, if I may. Yes. Mr. Vaughn, with all due respect, you've had over 15 years to make that motion. And when the Hines family and other neighbors came and stood before this board right here, they asked us, not just you. That's why I put the motion on the floor. Then people yes, I've been, I've been working on it for that long. We had a grant. We had a grant. The grant had been approved, and the people didn't want it. They didn't want to pay the water bill. The grant is still sitting on Mr. Van Arbuck's desk right now. I'm still working on that. It's going to be approved. We're, looking, we're trying to get the funding together at this point, Mr. Rourke. Madam Chair, with all due respect, we are preventing anything from moving forward by not giving the town of Blackstone permission to do this. 
I, Mr. Costa, maybe you can clarify. I believe Mr. Van Orbeck sent you a letter uh, uh, that you had. I received a letter today. We, Mr. Van Orbeck okay. and I and the other town managers were meeting on landfill issues. Um, and he provided me with a letter during that meeting and I made copies and placed it at everyone's desk. I will say from conversations myself, Mr. Van Orbeck has indicated that because this has dragged on for so long, we've missed grant opportunities and the cost of the water line has gone from a, an approximate 1.4 million to 2.3 million. And I, I do think the citizens have become <coughs> very frustrated by the process, uh, our failure to move forward with this. <coughs> Excuse me. I, I, the motion, as I understand it, would be we just give permission to run the water lines, and then it becomes Blackstone's. It's not up to us to mandate. Then, or? then it becomes a money issue at that point. For who? For us. Why? Why? Because we're going to have, they're going to come back to us and say we're going to need this amount of money. But us giving them permission doesn't obligate us to anything financially. If we just say you've got permission to run the line and then they have the financial aspect is the towns and then they are to deal with the, the, their water customers as far as mandating. So, Madam Chair, um, you know, I want our board members here, we, got to, we need to respect each other and I, and I get it and I, and I see what John's trying to do and I, see, I understand Mr. Vaughn. So, um, to, to clarify, clar this clarification question, um, what, what the town manager here of Blackstone is saying is what I'm hearing, I think, oh, and, Mr. and Mr. Vaughn, I hear what you're saying because you're looking at, you, you, when we get grant, when we start fooling with things, we, you, you're scared all of a sudden it's going to cost us. But what I think they're running into, if you tell me if I'm wrong, he can't do anything. Bingo. Until he knows he even got permission to go on county. Is that, I, I think that's. No, let me tell you, at first, what Blackstone did was Blackstone put conditions on it. They have just removed those conditions. The condition was that everyone in that area had to hook on. That was their condition that Blackstone had put on. They have changed that now because the new industry that's coming down there is going to be a big water user. Let me, give me another month to work on this. Right, and then what, I'll see what, what uh, right, I'll, I will see exactly what we can do. Now, if I speak, okay, I, I can see, I can Mr. feel the heat Mr. Coming. Royal wants to so much, so bad to get into my district, and, and, and that's the way he's done. Yes. And he's tried to embarrass me. You've done that on your all, own, Mr. All, all of the time. You should be embarrassed. Let people sit there and have a drink and drink nasty water. You should be embarrassed. Stop. Just yeah. stop. You're out of order. Both of you. Thank you. Madam Chair, what I was... What I, if if these these gentlemen could um, could maybe consider, um, if if John would would withdraw his motion and let Mr. Vaughn make the motion, with the understanding that if he if he needs another month, but I you know or tonight if you want to, Mr. Vaughn. I mean I I get to stand what you're saying. I'm, I want to talk to Phil first. You want to have a person again, person talk yes, to. Yes, yes, because what he did. You consider At the planning commission yesterday, they applied for a grant and then he withdrew the application. Okay. Look, on your, look in your package, you'll see what I'm, I'm talking about. So I need to know exactly. I'm not going to put this county in a financial position until I'm sure we can get the grant and everything else that we need to do. Madam Chair, two points of clarification. Number one, Mr. Vaughn can't do nothing on his own. He needs two more votes to do anything. And I will remind this board, those citizens stood before all of us asking for our help, not his, because they gave him over 15 years. My motion stands. All right, we have a motion on the floor to allow the town of Blackstone to construct the water line. John, would you clarify the aspects of your motion? In doing so, the county will grant permission for Blackstone to determine mandated connections and move forward at the town's determined timeline and permission is from the town limits to the Fort Pickett entrance on Cox Road. 
All right, so we have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second to Mr. Wark's motion? I, I, I had already seconded for, dis second for discussion. For discussion. I'm well. sorry. Yeah. Right. All right. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Nay. Nay. And, 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 no. But I'd like to see it on the business. It, it needs to be on unfinished business. It'll be on that next month. It'll be on unfinished business. Yeah. Okay. okay. On to new business. Um, Mr. Costin, the dog confinement period? Uh, yes, ma'am. This one kind of slipped by us. Um, and one of the things that I'm attempting to do is set up a permanent year calendar that will target each of the dates of things that we have recurring. Um, this is basically, I understand historically, April and May have been set aside for the pur purpose of confining dogs. I understand that some of the rationale for this is protection of young wildlife, and also it's an opportunity for the animal control officers to check on the status of rabies and license. Um, this is in accord with Section 3812 of the Donahue County Co Code. You can establish any period of time, but what I am recommending is a April 18th, that would be next Monday, through the remainder of May. I'd be happy to take any questions you all have. All right. Do we have a motion to approve Mr. Costin's recommendation for dog confinement period? So move. move. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. The dog, a county dog confinement period from April 18th through May 31st has been established. Um, May 31st. April 18th, May 31st. Pretty standard, yep. I think. We'd uh, I'm sorry. Yep. What's wrong? April 18th. Got the wrong. The I, I, it was this past Monday. I wrote it for I, I, my apologies. It should be uh, for this next Monday to give us some time to advertise the 25th. My apologies. Normally, we have done it for the Do we need first. Any kind you need to probably redo it just to make sure yeah. we're, All we're right. safe. All right. We want to redo. Um, I can just do that, just redo the motion. Just, just redo the motion. Yeah. Let's it'll, just redo override. the motion related to the dog confinement period, um, modifying the dates to April 25th through May 31st, through our motion. That's a motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. Madam Chairman, this, this next item is the setting of the regular meeting date for May 2022. I've had two board members advise me that they will not be able to attend the next regularly scheduled meeting, which is the third Thursday. Um, for the board's consideration, um, you can keep that date or you can change it to another date. Uh, my only concern is it leaves us just at a majority of three members. Uh, and uh, if any one member were to become ill, have some other issue, we lose the quorum. Uh, and particularly if we're going to be advertising, I know we're going to be advertising at least one zoning matter. Um, so, you know, uh, I'd like to know, you know what, the, what the board's pleasure is, if you want to keep that date or change the date. Madam Chair, I'd like to see the whole board here if available. Okay. So the date is, as it's scheduled now is May 19th? Is that correct? Right. I'd like to recommend, can we ch change it to May 26th at the same time, same place, just May 26th? Is that going to mess you up, Mr. Costin? Um, it, it's going, either way, it's messing you up. Either thanks, way. thanks to the General Assembly, we're already okay. messed up with the, okay. with the budget. So the 26th is fine. Okay. That's, all right. So, so I make, so make it a motion for them. All right, we have a motion to approve changing the regular board meeting date from May 19th, 2022 to May 26th, 2022. Do we have a second? Second. 7 p.m., correct? Yeah. 7 p.m. Did I we believe say 30 days or next meeting day? Next meeting. We said next meeting. I don't know if we said 30 days, but we can have somebody review the tape. Someone did mention 30 days, but I believe the motion was for the next regular yes. meeting. Madam Chair, if I may. Ms. Kelly, do you have a not notation? While, she, while she's looking. Yeah, well, so, so while she's looking for that, do, when we do a public hearing for the VDOT next meeting, 
Is we, that, said is the next, we said the next uh, – that one I remember we done, right. specifically so the next regular. Would that be a 630? Stay, we stick with seven. That's just like a regular public meeting. What, what the, the board has said to uh, uh, allow for the LRA to meet okay. at 630. Right. Be done with the LRA. I got you. And then start at 7. Okay, I got you. Okay. As, as we did tonight. But, okay. And that was – that's going to be – So 630 is be LRA, so we won't be so late. The intent is to, um, to distinguish – Continue to distinguish the LRA from the Board of Supervisors. Okay. What's going to be the next regular meeting? Next regular meeting. Okay. okay. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Do we already vote on this? I don't have a clue. No, we have a motion and a second to change the meeting date to May 26. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Any opposed? We'll the motion again. passes. Um, Mr. Rourke, citizen board appointments? Uh, yes, ma'am. Board members, if y'all may recall, uh, John Anzavino once mentioned to us about changing the process of selecting people to the board appointments because in the past uh, questions have been raised that people were just putting their friend or family member or something on it. And he mentioned about possibly um, having uh, a new system to where supervisors can bring in qualified candidates from their districts and then have them on file at the uh, uh, staff's office. And I would like to go ahead and consider us doing that. I, I think we get the, that way the board, it'll be just like almost like a hiring process. You get to see the background of the people that's getting on the board and everybody gets to see them and vet them and say, hey, look, you know, it, like if I bring y'all three and everybody selected yeah. one. Yeah. What? Well, Madam Chair, we have discussion. Yes, he's, you haven't introduced this as a motion, have you? No, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, that's not a bad idea, but what I'm thinking is I think that they should at least give us a, a letter of intent, and right. then that letter of intent could go to all the board members. Would that yes. be? Yes, you, you see what I'm hitting, Madam Chair? Yeah. All right. Madam Chair, may I? Mm -hmm. well, I'm familiar with this process uh, from Matthews in Greensville. At the start of the calendar year, we could do the start of the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Um, it was advertised uh, what list of, or based on who, who, what positions were up for reappointment or, or, or oh. as it became vacant. Okay. okay. But you would advertise at the beginning of either the fiscal year or the calendar year and say, okay, you know, we've got one BZA appointment coming up. We've got two planning coming During the course of the year, it would be an advertisement in the paper website that basically said, if you're interested in any of these positions, send a letter of intent and a resume. Those, as you indicated, Mr. Yeah. Rourke, would be kept on file, and then as things came up, we could share those with the, all right, you know, with the with the whole board, and you all make your make your decisions. Well, I mean, I, I think it's a good process. I think it's a more transparent process, and I think it gives us the opportunity right. to put the most qualified in the in the positions. You're trying to destroy the good old boy thing, ain't you? Yes. <laughs> See where Are you want to put this in the form of a motion, Mr. Rourke? Yes, ma'am. I'll go ahead and move that the. Uh, Board of Supervisors adopt the program as identified by County, Administ County Administrator Costin that Matthews County used so we can begin to select the best qualified candidates for board appointments. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I'll second again for discussion. Um, the, um, I, I don't, so, so, so we do that, and I don't, I don't see. We heard John Shoot talk tonight, and ain't a lot of bunch of people want to volunteer and get paid twenty five dollars a meeting, you know. Mm -hmm. So, what if we get hung up and we do it sooner or later? We got to make decisions to appoint somebody. So, we we need to be thinking about it. you with me, Mr. Costa. You see what I'm saying? I mean, it gives you a some time when I ask people to help me. I mean, you almost got a bag now. Yeah. Well, it's like a job applicant pool. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you go swimming in the kiddie pool. Sometimes you go swimming in the Olympic pool. Okay. <laughs> okay. It gives you a pool. Okay. And if there's nobody in the pool that you are comfortable with, you don't think they're qualified for that position. Right. You, you basically go out and, you know, how, pound how, the streets. How would every district be represented? That's a consideration. That, 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 that would be a consideration the board has to make. If yeah. you have five applicants See. for... And none, none Mr. Rourke and Mr. Bowen ought to know the people in their district. 
Right. You would have to do a little searching yourself and asking to put a letter of intent in or exactly. something. Right. right. You still have to do yeah. that. I yep. get you. But what Mr. Rourke is saying, I guess, is, you know, it, it, you might not know if that's my brother-in-law or whoever, and, and, and then you're building this. It, well, it the, gives the, a more transparent. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get um, it. I get it. I get it. I, pro I don't see Process there. And here's the other thing. If they don't get us selected, guess what you can do? Blame it on the rest of us. <laughs> It's right, <laughs> right. And then, and then you can't say, yeah, right. Um, I, taking away your privilege of appointing someone from your district. But they're, they're in your district. You know, and like he said, you would be able to have the opportunity to go out and seek them to give the letter of intent. He said it's, it's hard getting people to volunteer. To right, it is tough. Around, I mean, it's hard. Yeah. Well, people don't want to do it. And, and, and the argument of this thing, and I don't want to just keep beating this dead horse, the argument of this thing is people elect us to make the best decisions. And so they, you, and, and, I, and I, hear, I hear you on the transparency, I get it. But what I would still have to do is try to make the be best decision and be transparent to everybody why I picked this person right. or whatever. I, I get it. All right, we have a motion and a second on the floor regarding citizen board appointments. Um, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, all opposed? Nay. Nay. No. All right. Mr. Rourke, Economic Development Committee. Yes, ma'am. In conversations with uh, the mayors, I asked them if they would be interested in um, us having the opportunity to uh, establish the Economic Development Committee again. And uh, I don't have it in writing, but they all told me that they think that that would be a good idea. Um, one of the things here as of recently that came up about this was once the conversation started with the Cox Road, you know, there was a lot of talk about the ARPA funds that was available, but I feel like the two town, other two towns should have been in the room as well to have discussions about where to possibly put ARPA funds. So I think moving forward, we should reestablish the Economic Development Committee, but I would ask that the staff prepare a proper draft for what they think is the best fit you know like one voting member or either two voting members from the localities along with the board of supervisors and then give us some options and make a decision on putting the economic development committee back together i thought we did away with, i thought we did away with uh committees that's why i'm asking to put it back together we would have to change our rules and procedures correct no no because that was done on a vote open session, just vote to eliminate all the committees. We could reestablish that any time. It'd be a change to the rules and procedures, correct? Yeah, they were amended to now yeah. reestablish. But if I may, and this, this all took place before I got here, mm -hmm. but the amendment to the Well, board, I voted against it, so I didn't pay that much attention to it. But the amendment to the uh, board uh, rules was to eliminate board committees. What I'm, is that correct? What I'm hearing you say, this is a broader group of people, like made up of maybe all three a mayor, towns, the all three, board. a mayor and the town manager, or a county, but some combination of, mm -hmm. of people representing the county in all three towns as sort of a county-wide economic development committee, not just a board committee. Correct. If that's the case, I don't think you'd have to amend your, okay. your rules because your this, your membership is outside the board. Does this fall under the scope of Mr. Zodi's position? I would think it would be, definitely be somebody that he would be working with if you all wanted to, to pursue that. Should um, he be allowed input into this conversation? Uh, he, he, Mr. Zodi, do you have thoughts well, about this? Yes, um, as I understood from comments that um, made at the CRC meeting, um, I do like to talk, so um, <laughs> I would be seeing most of them I think that that gives me the opportunity to customize some zoning ordinances to make us more economic, economically attractive for everybody. Okay. okay. Do we need, I mean, can we do that just as a consensus or do we need to put that in a motion? Because they can, I would like to see them draft something for us. Do they have two voting members, one voting member, and one um, uh, um, vice or? It, it, Good point, but let me say this now. 
when you start making a commitment, I'm, 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 I hear, I love economic development, all about it. But if we get too many, if we got, with too many vote, if we got too many people on that committee that can vote and take the money out of the county general fund, I got a problem with it. But that's what I'm saying. Three. Okay. Three. Well, we got, we, three. The numbers got to be right. Right. You got to have one right. voting member from each town. That's right. And then you can, they can assign, the towns can assign who that voting member is. So that's why I was asking for them to put something together and maybe have it ready for next month. You, you, you hear me, Madam Chair, what I'm saying is like that when the, regular, when the Economic Development Committee was formed, it was all five board members and then town representatives. Mm -hmm. So they and, can't and, out vote us. Right, right, right. That's right. They can't because, out vote well, the they vote and take you, you mm -hmm. vote for, you know, say, well, we're going to apply for this grant in county, you're going to be in charge of it. What? <laughs> and, and, right, right, right. And for clarification, this would be a committee separate and distinct from basically your inactive ADA, uh, IDA. Yes. Maybe, maybe that's what you're thinking about, yeah. Because you do have an IDA that is inactive. But this would be separate and apart from that. Madam Chair, I'm just coming up to 10 o'clock, and, and I'm, getting ang I'm getting a little bit angry here. So... Can we put this on? Can we? Let me think. Can I chew on this one? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. We don't have to put it in the let's form don't put of a motion. Let's he put, can let's put it unfinished to, to observe okay. next, and next let's, month. Let's, get Greg to look at it. Let's think about this for a while. Yeah, let, Greg can maybe look at it. Yeah. Okay. I, th you know, I hear you, John. I got you. <laughs> All right, so Mr. Hyde is not here. Mr. Lewis, are you going to speak to us about the fire enforcement code? And Madam Chair, if I may, the reason Mr. Hyde is not here is um, he was returning to the office and um, was asked to come out and support the uh, response to the biofuels fire. Uh, so he's actually um, working um, there, working that event. That's why he's not here this evening. Go ahead, Dick. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair and Board, I'm going to try to be brief. Um, I'm coming to ask for a public hearing for next month, if y'all would... I'd uh, like to have one. I would like to have the Board of Supervisors adopt the 2018 Virginia Statewide Fire Prevention Code along with the appendixes of um, B, C, and D. And uh, Mr. Hyde had a couple of other um, parts that he wanted to add to it. We'd have to go over that w next month with you. Um, basically, I've been here for almost five years now. We've gone through six assistant fire marshals in that time. Well, actually, five. One of them's um, been with us twice. So basically about every nine months or so we change inspectors, which has been really hard on the school systems, been hard on the nursing homes. They basically do the schools, the nursing homes, and the um, daycares. Other than that, they don't on a regular basis do our businesses. They're doing it on a complaint basis, and I do the majority of the complaints. So every time they come on a complaint, um, they basically ask me to go with them. So for the last five years, I've been doing the inspections with them. Um, I've talked to Mr. Um, Cosset about it, and he decided to send me to fire marshal school. So for the first three, three weeks of March, I was in fire marshal school in Harrisonburg. Um, I have been certified to be a fire official now. Um, got my accreditation from DHCD, which is Department of Housing and Community Development, along with um, the fire marshal um, academy. Um, Congratulations. By thank you. Um, basically, I'm accredited for all that, so I'd be asking for the adoption of the code and then um, appoint the building department to be the actual um, administration of the code and for me to be the fire marshal for Nottoway County only. Um, the actual towns would have to do adoption of the code separately. Um, of course, I have to ask the county to adopt it first because I work for the county. It would be on a limited basis for the county. I've been doing the schools for the county. Um, Votech, um, the, the limited number of gas stations and stuff that we actually have in the county. Of course, the government complex and the other surrounding areas. Um, one and two family houses are basically exempted from the code from regular inspections. You can only get, actually get into them on a limited basis and you have to have legal counsel to actually get into them. Um, I'd be in charge of hazmat, um, outdoor burning, um, basically anything that's part of the code, fireworks explosives and all the rest of the stuff is in the actual code. Um, if you appoint me to do that, then I've, I've already talked to the mayor of Burkeville, the um, town managers of Crew and Blackstone. They're all in agreement with it. Um, 
I've had positive feedback from basically everybody I've talked to about it. So if I can actually get the county to do it, I believe in the next couple of months I can get the three towns to do their public um, adoption of it too. So I was just hoping that y'all would put it up for a public meeting for next month. If you have any questions. So tonight's motion would be to authorize staff to advertise the public hearing, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. I don't see none. I don't see none around here. What the public got to say? I mean, that's what we're doing having a public hearing, you know. And just clarification. So, that like Piedmont, the state fire marshal will still go there. You, yeah, you, you I, I, even... yeah, I would be exempted from all. Okay, um, gotcha. State properties, the uh, prisons, um, any yeah. federal properties. Only thing I'd be doing in, actually in Pickett would be if it's only on yeah. county property, and it's basically just businesses, gas stations, well, along with the schools properties. So basically, any homes and stuff like that, I'd be exempted from. So it'd be restaurants. And basically, I, I, I get part of their um, sprinkler alarm system uh, reports now. Right, right. I would be getting all of them. I don't know how many of them are actually sent to the fire marshal's office. But they're supposed to keep their sprinkler systems up to date. They're supposed to keep their fire alarms up to date. Right now, I'm responsible to, for them until they get their certificate of occupancies. Once they do that, I, I lose my jurisdiction. Um, I know right now I've got, I'm the code official, the building official. Um, erosion sediment control combined administrator and I do bio solids and I just don't want to get bored so I decided to yeah. do something else <laughs> yeah well I mean he's, he's right at that fire mall it's a it's a big turnover I mean it's like five you guys could wait five in the last five years probably yeah they yeah. basically they only do other than the schools and nursing homes right they basically do about four inspections in the county a yeah. year I mean like, like you know the, the violations that we had here because basically <clears throat> It's just stuff that nobody looks for, it's like um, blocked exit doors, yeah. double locks on exit doors. I mean, it's stuff that you don't really think about, um, extension cords, and right. it's just electrical problems and stuff that you don't normally think of. And nowadays, we got people shooting and stuff, and you don't want to be in Walmart and can't get out the exit door because they have it blocked or double locked. Yeah. So it's just stuff that normally that you, nobody's inspecting for. Right. Madam Chair, I move to authorize county staff to advertise a public hearing for the regular May monthly meeting of the Board of Supervisors to consider local adoption of Virginia statewide fire prevention code and assess an assignment of fire code prevention enforcement responsibility for Nottoway County. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh -uh. Aye. Any opposed? The motion for the public hearing related to fire enforcement code and fire code official passes. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Costin, loan repayment agreement. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, UAV Pro, one of the businesses out in Fort Pickett, um, has had a tobacco uh, loan. Uh, this is a, a repackaging of that loan. Um, it is um, slightly different in that the original 2018 loan went forward with no um, uh, guarantee of repayment. Uh, I've worked with Mr. Allman and um, have uh, uh, also with the Tobacco Commission. We have a letter of uh, basically security commitment from uh, his bank, uh, Citizens Bank and Trust Company, that basically says he's good for this money. They're 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 doing a letter of credit. Uh, that that letter that letter can be cited in the document and um, executed uh, this evening. Um, and I uh, would ask that we move forward with this. He's, he um, is, looks to be a very substantial, well-backed. Mr. Zoni and I went out there, met with him, toured the facility. It's a, a pretty neat little operation out there. Um, but this is basically to uh, allow for some expansion of that business out there. Um, we, we would be guaranteeing the loan, but if we have a letter of credit that puts us in a little bit safer um, security than what... Uh, uh, we've had in the past. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Costin? No, ma'am. Do we have a motion related to the authorization for execution of the loan repayment agreement as Mr. Costin has presented? I so move. We have a second. second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh. Any opposed? Motion passes. Mr. Costin is authorized to execute the loan repayment agreement between Nottoway County, UAB Pro, and the Tobacco Region Revitalization Commission. Uh, Ms. Tomer, school surplus. Madam Chair, the school has 11 vehicles. 
Um, and I think they've been culminated over a span of years now. They need to get them out. Um, they've declared them as surplus. They include um, a handful of buses used for student transportation, um, a wrecker, as well as uh, normal transport vehicles, cars, and trucks. Um, it is the board's decision as to how you decide to dispose of them. You can um, either offer them for sale at public auction or offer them for sale at sealed bid. Seal bid. Are you putting that in the form of a motion? Yes, ma'am. I second that motion. All right. We have a motion and a second for seal bid. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Yeah, when you seal bid, you, you advertise for so long, Ms. Katie. Thank you. Mr. Hyde is not here. Are you I'll carry. Speak? I'll carry this. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I mentioned this last week that we were working on a grant um, through uh, uh, Representative Spanberger. Uh, this is the Community Project Funding Grant. This is the same grant that uh, Blackstone used to uh, uh, obtain about $900,000 for the uh, aerial firefighting apparatus. This year's grant, uh, is, it's, it's a fresh start, it's a new year. Uh, we did not apply for anything last year. Um, this year I'm recommending that we apply. In fact, we have applied because the deadline was last Friday. Um, but this is a grant that we've identified as a, a potential funding mechanism for $1 million uh, to be used towards the public safety communications system, which we're in the process of, of rebuilding. Um, this is one of the, uh, the probably the top priority uh, project uh, from a capital in, uh, perspective by the board. Uh, this is just an opportunity to, to help offset some of the funds uh, that would be required to make that uh, make that happen. Um, we have received multiple letters of support from the fire companies, the rescue squad, uh, the school system. Uh, we've gotten a lot of uh, local support on this grant. Um, this would just be a formal uh, uh, resolution by the board supporting the grant and authorizing it to go forward. Again, we had to make it on Friday to get it in the uh, in the portal. Um, but I would certainly strongly recommend that uh, you, you adopt the resolution which follows in the packet. I'd be happy to take any questions you have at this time. Madam Chair, I move adoption of the resolution supporting the county's efforts to obtain a fiscal year 2023 community project funding grant to support efforts to improve the county's public safety communication system. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed it. Madam Chair, it's 10 o'clock. You need to poll the board to see if you want to continue. Actually, it's 10.03, but anyway. Do I do that or do you do that? Uh, you can do it. Uh, Mr. Rort? I'm good. I'll stay. Mr. Bowen? Let's move on. Ms. Simmons? Move on. Mr. Vaughn? Move on. I agree, move on. I'm going to be brief because if not, you're going to know how hungry I am. You're going to hear my stomach groan. <laughs> I did. I won't go say none. <laughs> um, the April consent agenda includes your March operational expenses for all funds. Um, it is. It includes um, some technology equipment from the public library system that they would like to donate to Tech for Troops, which we have authorized them to do previously. Um, it includes a refund to a citizen that paid for an administrative variance. Uh, after Mr. Zodi's review of everything, it wasn't needed. Um, there's a budget adjustment for animal control for $2,500. This is the last of four disbursements of a $10,000 grant that they received. And your very next item is a new award from that same grant funding. And that budget adjustment is for $2,500 as well. That's the first of two disbursements. Now, I offered a motion in the memo that I provided, but you have one more um, item on the consent agenda that Mr. Costin is going to speak to. It would be my suggestion that you all take action on the first five as a whole and then six separately. Any questions for Ms. Tomer? Do we have a motion relating to the first five items on uh, consent items? I so move. A motion and a second to approve items one through five under consent items on the agenda. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Approved. 
All right, we'll move to item six, the steps request. Yes, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, members of the board, this one's, this one's not easy, but I want you to be aware of, of, of what you've got here. Uh, steps has asked for a letter of support in their community project funding grant application, the same thing that we're, same type of program that we're going through for uh, the communication system. Uh, to support their application for um, homeless housing. Um, the, here, the, here are the concerns. Um, Representative Spanberger can only put forward 15 requests. I have no idea how many requests she's going to get, um, but if we support a request, it could further uh, uh, that proposal and create competition on our own, okay? The second aspect here is we've been asked by steps to use our soon to be received second round of ARPA funding to use some of that towards this project. Um, if you support their grant application now, that could come back around to say, well, if you support us on this effort, you should support us on this other effort. The third consideration here is this effort is actually going to be in um, the Prince Edward County. The facility will not be in Nottoway, it will be in another locality. Although I have been advised that Nottoway is a pretty heavy user of their, um, of their services. Uh, Mr. Rourke, I know you're there's, uh, the steps representative. Um, I just want you to be aware supporting this grant could work against your other, your, your grant uh, for the radio system. I'd be happy to take any questions you have on that, top, that, on that topic. Madam Chair, I'd like to put a motion on the floor to uh, support STEPS request. We have a motion on the floor to support the request. Do we have a second? Second for discussion. Okay. So let's clarify, Mr. Costin, if you could. So I heard that last statement, but I'm trying to figure out. So, um, what you're talking about is the grant for the million dollars that we need to fix our radio system? Yes, that's that grant application. Okay. Is the same funding source that STEPS is seeking. But it's not, the, it's in the same grant program. Okay. Representative Spanberger is looking to, looking to put forward 15 projects from her district. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, okay. I got you. I so, you. Well, so as yeah, they're weighing you. which ones to it, put It's not like it's a million and steps is going out to it and we're going for the same million. We're, it's, we're, not, it's not like that. Yeah, it's, we're, it's we're, a, we're in the same, we're in the same larger project. Well, do you think actually issuing a letter of support is going to constitute or create or be viewed as competition for a grant that we're applying for? It could. It could. I just want you to be aware that that and then also, as I said earlier, on the back side of this is they've already made a request for your ARPA funds or a portion of your ARPA funds. And if I, if I were on their side, if I were making the argument, well, you supported my grant request here, why don't you turn over some ARPA funds for me on this project as well? Madam Chair, there's nothing wrong with asking. <laughs> so um, I will also say this, that we're not guaranteed to get anything. That's, so, that's correct. So why not throw as much of not away in there as we can? Because this is going to help our citizens. So, so we have a, oh, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. I'm, no, go, no, go, no, Madam Chair, go I'm ahead. Done. I was just. No, I, I, so I'm going back to him again. So with these all the funds. So, um, it, okay, I hear you. I, and I'm trying to wrap my head around it, Mr. Costin, so forgive me. Um, is it possible that we could get some of those funds if we wanted to help? Um, a certain fire department with getting a truck or something like that? Too. Yes, sir. That's, this is very much on point to what I said last Thursday night. There are a number of capital improvement projects right. that are not built into the budget as Ms. Tomer and I have it right. right now because we don't have anything on the revenue side. That could change. I got you. And Mr. Royal, you saying like, let's throw a bunch of you know, let's get something out of it. Right. Get something we might not right. be one of the 15 selected for anything. Yeah, right for anything. I got you. That step's a good program. I see Ms. Harrah back there. It's a good program. All right for me to ask for her. 
if you want. No, terrible. no, stop. It's <laughs> <laughs> terrible, I'm sorry. Do want to comment on this and provide? I'd love, I'd love the opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Costin is correct that our application is going in or went in on Friday the 15th in the same pool that you all's radio communication request went in for. That is correct. What I, I don't necessarily agree on is that it creates competition. I think that the projects themselves will be evaluated independently of one another <clears throat> based on conversations with Congressman Sp Congresswoman Spamberger. They're not looking at one from Nottaway, one from Amelia. They are looking at district-wide 15 opportunities going forward. So part of me says that is two grants coming from Nottaway doesn't mean one is going to be given higher priority than another. Um, the other issue for me is to discuss the ARPA funds. Yes, he is again correct that we've submitted a request for $200,000 of your ARPA funds. We made that request from every six counties that we serve this homeless program from for the sole purpose of acquisition of land to put this development on. Um, we have no fantasy that we are actually going to get funded at $200,000 from each of our localities. Um, we do have a meeting. We've been invited to the county administrators meeting on Monday in Buckingham so that we'll have an opportunity face to face with all the county administrators in one room to discuss the ARPA request in more detail. The other piece of this, um, we've given a great deal of thought and you, you guys know I've lived in Norway for 40 years or more. That's a long time. <laughs> but when you look at our region that includes Amelia, Buckingham, Cumberland, Lunenburg, Nottoway, and Prince Edward for our homeless services, we needed to find a location that A, had municipal water and sewer, B, had public transportation, and not just what the Farmville area bus does or what the Blackstone, Blackstone bus does. We also have to look for economic opportunities because people that are homeless need support services to find work so that they can get back on their feet and start paying their own rent. So the decision in Farmville was really just an economic driving decision. They have more opportunities for entry level jobs, more opportunities to go to the hospital to work. There's a medical facility right there. So it has nothing to do that we're building this in Prince Edward versus Nottoway. I mean, that, that really was not an either or. So I respectfully request that you guys do submit the letter of support because you recognize that homelessness is an issue in your county. You're the second highest utilizer of services of our entire six county region and you're only 20 individuals behind Prince Edward. So if that tells you the significant need that rests in your county citizens right now, we are looking to find a way to house them appropriately and safely rather than having to use hotels. And that's what we're using right now. And in all honesty, the Wedgwood Motel is the only motel here in Nottoway County that we can usually get room space for. So we are looking to put them in an opportunity that gives them a little bit more self-respect than just putting them in a hotel. So I'm happy to answer any questions. I mean, when you look at our statistics, in fiscal year 21, we served 368 individuals out of 191 households. Hmm. And this far, thus far this year, we have sheltered over 326 individuals, and that's only through the month of March. So we are going to surpass the numbers from last year. So it's not strictly a COVID related issue. This is an economic issue and inflation is just making it worse. Okay, thank you. So we have a motion and a second on the floor to uh, approve the support letter for steps. Um, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Uh, Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes with the letter of support. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Kidding. All right. All right. Let's see. We've got correspondence information items in the package uh, from CRC, report of sales tax receipts, and a report from the Blackstone Volunteer Fire Department. Any questions relating to any of this information? Uh, Mr. Costin, County Administrator's Report. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Basically, most of my report was reflected in um, different 
the subject matter uh, communications in, in, within the packet. There were a couple of items that Mr. Rourke asked for updates on um, that either hasn't been addressed this week or last week. Uh, one is the, the website. The, re the material remains under review. However, the greatest delay is with the vendor re revised, coordinating with Blair Marketing to resolve the live streaming technical issue. Uh, he also asked about the personnel policy in, in the evaluation process, and I think those two go, go ha hand in hand. Um, we have to do a thorough assessment of the practices and desired uh, practices uh, for submission to legal staff for them to do a first draft uh, on, on the personnel policy. Uh, this is a document that's about 30 pages long uh, and uh, asks a, a lot of very detailed questions and quite frankly, uh, it's just been pushed back to the, uh, to the stack. Um, that policy will include a process for personnel evaluations um, uh, at least yearly, but uh, I'd also like to give some consideration to a, a new trend in HR, which is not to do the uh, annual, you know, feedback, but to uh, develop a, a process of uh, ongoing feedback, perhaps quor quarterly interactions. I've uh, been asked to provide some expenditure information about uh, VACO that's attached, uh, but I'd also like to take a moment and, and address the conflict of interest issues uh, that have been raised uh, regarding several board members. I'm going to start with Mr. Bowen. Uh, it has been alleged uh, that he has a conflict because he works at the, uh, at the geriatric hospital, which the state is seeking to provide water to. Um, he has no conflict. He happens to work at a facility that might receive uh, water uh, through the state efforts. Uh, how that water is being delivered, as I said earlier, it still hasn't been determined. No one seems to know the course. But as I said earlier, what really measures conflict of interest is, is he in a position to make a decision that might benefit him or his immediate family, those persons that live with him? Um, and that's not the case. Just because he works someplace uh, that might benefit from this uh, water uh, project doesn't mean he has a conflict. Um, not knowing what the course of the water is going to be is kind of hard to determine if it's going to run by his property, but he's not a deciding person here. The state Department of General Services will make that decision. So there is no conflict of interest with Mr. Bowen. Did he stay out of a meeting? Uh, yes, he did, because he didn't know whether or not he had a conflict. Once he got the, the, the green light, if you will, then he started to engage in meetings, including a closed session with the Burkeville Town Council, which I too participated in as a guest of the uh, Town Council. Uh, to Ms. Shackleton, uh, another co concern about conflict regarding the fact that she works uh, at a bank that the county does uh, banking with. I've spoken with the treasurer. The treasurer makes the selections of where the county's money is saved in or invested. Not Ms. Shuckleton, not me, not any member of the board, not the board as a group. That's the, the, the purview of the treasurer. Treasurer has one standard and one standard only. Where can I get the best rate? The bank that Ms. Shuckleton works for is not the only bank we bank with. There's no conflict of interest. Um, the next, I'll, I'll kind of group these two together, uh, Mr. Vaughn and uh, Ms. Simmons regarding the uh, winning of a raffle, it's been conveyed by the Conflict of Interest Council that that does not constitute a conflict. Uh, nevertheless, that, was a, that, that inquiry was made as a result of an ongoing Virginia State Police investigation. The board knows, I've said this before, the board knows, I come from a cop family. I grew up around people who do investigations all the time. Earlier in my career, I was trained to do um, zoning violations, and that doesn't sound really, you know, uh, it's, it's, nobody makes a, makes a TV show around, you know, zoning investigators. Um, but um, once in a while you find yourself do, dealing with things like uh, child abuse, elder abuse, and actually um, some, some money laundering for drugs. Okay, so you get involved in investigations. You have to be worried about due process, uh, and one of the things that investigators do is they keep their mouth shut. They don't talk about what they're doing for two reasons. 
They don't want to tip off the person or entity being investigated. And the second thing is, if there's nothing there, if the person has done no wrong, they don't want that person's character brought into uh, suspicion. Um, there is an ongoing investigation, and we may never hear any more about it, which means everything's good. If something comes out of it, I don't think it will because we, the people that kind of set the rules and enforce the rules in this area has said no rule was violated by people winning a, uh, a raffle. Madam Chairman, that's the end of my report. Be happy to take any questions. Any questions for Mr. Costin? Um, comments from members of the board. Mr. Vaughn? No. Ms. I apologize to no. you, Madam Chair. Ms. Simmons? No. Mr. Bowen? Uh, two things, Madam Chair. Um, um, I know it's late. So one thing, um, let's see how I can say this. This is going to be a tough. Well, first of all, let me. This is the easy one. Let me thank Sheriff Jones and Buddy Hyde. We did a um, workplace violence drill at Piedmont Hospital, um, and they gave us some really good points. We, we, you know, and, and, the, and the great thing about a, a drill is you find your weak spots and you try to fix them. And it was a lot of weak spots. I'll be the first day <laughs> because you know when somebody's is an active shooter, you act different than you would as a fire. You don't go to it; you go away the other way. So anyway, we're, we're working on that. But I want to thank them both for taking the time to come up at Piedmont and, and coaching our staff. Um, here's the, here's a subject that I really you know I hate to put it out there, but it's time. Um, and I don't hate to put it out there because it's just time. It's ready. Um, we need to really take a look at, um, and we need, to, we need to put it on the agenda. We need to come up with a tax, like a dwelling tax for these emergency services. We can't sustain, they can't sustain the budget they have, and we can't just keep pulling money out the general fund and thinking that we're going to fix everything. And, 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 and people need 200000 and you just throw 200000 They need sustainability. They need money to keep coming in. Um, you know, when I saw that thing in Richmond, it was a lady, a, a pregnant lady, downtown Richmond, and it was an hour for somebody to respond to her. And that's, that's real stuff. That's downtown Richmond. They got people all around them. And, um, uh, and so what, what's happening is we, and, and I don't know, I don't know how we can ask Mr. Costin to start looking uh, or what's out there and what can you do legally, but I, we, 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 we are, we're responsible for safety, and, when some, and, and they're the ones in the trenches. And it's, it's fire and rescue. i got to say that, the rescue. It's, it's not always fire. It's, you know, we had a fire this evening, but most time it's getting somebody off the ground or floor, that fell down and having heart problems. And I, I don't know. They, 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 those folks are just amazing. And I know taxpayer citizens don't want to hear about a tax or type of anything like that, but it's got to be done because some, sooner or later somebody's going to dial 911 and nobody's going to show up. Mm -hmm. And we're responsible for that, especially, and they have made that clear to us that a lot of that calls is in the county and not in the town. It's time, y'all. I, mean, I know we, we're not going to have it in this budget, Mr. Carson. I know we, we're, we're at the 11th hour. I get that. But we have got to put this tax somehow and do a public, whatever we got to do, it needs to be done. I, I, you know, I don't, it, if it costs me 25 or $50 a year to make sure someone shows my house to take care of my family, then so be it. I'll pay it. You know, I got to pay it. But we got to do something, okay? I, I agree 100% with you. Okay. But there is a special tax that you, we can do. Right. It'll be earmarked for emergency right. services. Yes. Right. Yes. So anyway. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I would ask if, if you would, if, if you're okay, the, the, a general census, if we can ask Mr. Costin to start opening that door of, of, of looking at that for the future. Mr. Costin, is that mm -hmm. something to look into for us? Thank you. Mr. Roark? Yes, ma'am. Um, just to kind of piggyback a little bit off what Steve said there, he's right. 90% of the fire calls in the county being held. Is that what it is, 90? Yes, sir. 90% of the fire calls. And uh, thank you. It's Captain now, correct? Captain Fulford, this has got to be painful for you, brother. <laughs> this long. Thank you uh, for sitting down for the sheriff. I greatly appreciate that. Um, Madam Chair, I apologize for um, my outburst earlier, and if y'all want to censure me, feel no, free. No, we, we know y'all love each other. I'm yeah. getting used to it. So. <laughs> it don't seem like it's working. <laughs> 
Sorry, ma'am. Yeah. Anything else, Mr. Watt? Uh, no, I'm done. Thank you. Right. Okay, so we now need a motion to enter closed session. Oh, I closed my book. Oh, no. Madam Chair, I move to in a closed session. I move that the Board of Supervisors of Ottawa County, Virginia, adjourn into closed meeting pursuant to Code of Virginia 2.2-3711A3, discussion or consideration of the acquisition of real property for the public purpose or for the disposition of publicly held real property where discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiation strategy of the public body, specifically property in or near the town of Crew, 2.2-3711A7, for consultation with legal counsel and briefings by staff members or consultants pertaining to actual or probable litigation where such consultation or briefing and open meeting would adversely affect the negotiation or litigating posture of the public body, specifically regarding zoning litigation and litigation concerning personnel. And 2.2-3711A1, assignment and performance of specific county employees specifically relating to personnel matters now pending in county administration. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? This meeting will now enter closed session. I want, well, I missed, I want to answer that question. Mr. Abbott, I don't, I don't, I don't think it, it wasn't about water with the boundary lines jumped as first. It was about getting getting the population up so they could apply. Hey, doctor, doctor, excuse me. No, first of all, I am working on a screenplay about zoning, about being a planner. Hey. So, <laughs> I'll see them all. Okay, you too. Them trying to get that that reservoir that they could provide right. water to the state system as opposed to coming through crew. That is not a first. First, uh, sir, I don't know if it was first, second, third. You asked me what was, what was, I'm up here. I said it.
Oh, Lord. A chair fell. <laughs> oh, my God. You weren't kidding. She was like, she was like listing over there. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm coming. I'll pick you up. <laughs> this meeting will now reconvene in open session. Ms. Simmons, will you yes. move to certify? Whereas the Nottoway County Board of Supervisors had convened an executive meeting on this date pursuant to the affirmative record vote in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. And whereas 2.2-3712D of the Code of Virginia requires a certification by this Board of Supervisors that such executive meeting was conducted in conformity with the Virginia law. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Nottawa County Board of Supervisors hereby certify that to the best of each member's knowledge, one, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements by the Virginia law were discussed in an executive meeting to which the certification resolution applies, and two, only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convening the executive meeting were here discussed or considered by the Board of Supervisors. And three, no action was taken in the executive meeting regarding the items discussed. All right, we have a motion for certification. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Uh, Mr. Constant, will you roll call the board? Uh, yes, Madam Chairman. Mr. Rourke, do you so certify? I do. Mr. Bowen, do you so certify? Yes. Ms. Simmons, do you so certify? Yes. Mr. Vaughn, do you so certify? Yes. And Madam Chairman, Shackleton, do you so certify? Yes. It's 5 0, ma'am. All certified. Uh, the board took no action in closed sessions, provided direction to staff. I uh, will now entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All, all in favor? Uh, Aye. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>